Welcome everybody to the Granite State Sports Network. We are on the campus of Newfound Regional High School, home of the Bears, for today's NHIAA Division IV football contest between the hosts, the Newfound Regional Bears, and the Franklin Golden Tornadoes. My name is Mike Bellevue, former head coach of Sauhegan High School. And alongside of me is Coach Brandon O'Connell, current assistant defensive coordinator for Sauhegan. And he's here to help me do this broadcast. I know he's excited. We all are. This has been a real tough 2020 with the COVID-19 pandemic. We are all just thankful to be playing football here today. Beautiful location here in Bristol, New Hampshire. I'd like to thank the governor. Jeff Collins, the executive director of the NHIA, all the coaches and athletic directors and principals in the state for making this possible for the student athletes. Coach O'Connell, as a former player not that long ago, what does it mean to be having, if you were a senior, a senior year? Coach, I've got to tell you, your senior year of football is the best year of your life, and to be without it is just devastating. So I've I feel for the kids who weren't able to play their spring sports last year, and I'm just happy to see it back. Really looking forward to today's contest. You know, first game of the year, Division Four football. Beautiful drive on the way up. I don't know if you Absolutely. happen to catch that foliage, but it's it's happening. Summer is a turning into a thing of the past, and we're in the fall, and fall means football season. And no greater state in the country to be watching high school football than here in New Hampshire. It is, it's an awesome thing. You got that right, coach. Franklin's head football coach is Jeff Davis. And I think we're going to hear a lot today of senior running back Jacob Beaupre. Really outstanding back in Division Four, And newfound, their head coach is the experienced Ray Kershaw. He's known as a program rehabilitator. He has done a great job wherever he's gone. And there's not many seniors playing in this game, there's but the not. one or two or three that are, they're certainly excited. Absolutely. It looks like, excuse me, Coach, it looks like that Franklin, the Golden Tornadoes, will be kicking off to Newfound. Ball being set on the tee. And deep in return formation for Newfound is number 20, Quinn Van Lingen. He, along with number one, Trent Fouts, uh, excuse me, number seven, Malachi Ingram. I've heard his name. He's a junior, and he could be a real special football player. And we are about to get underway here at Newfound Regional. <laughs> Ref signals the ball in play. Franklin kicks it. It's a low squib, bounding down, and... Fallen on by number 20, Quinn Van Lagen. And Newfound will set up their offense first and 10 on about the 20 yard line. Now, Coach, while Newfound gets set up, let's look at some of the keys to success for both games, for both teams rather. I think that with the shortened preseason, we're going to see more penalties and possibly more turnovers. So I think the team that has the fewer of both will win the game. I couldn't agree more. And, and watching some of the highlights last night and hearing from some of the coaches, certainly uh, without a, a, a normal preseason, most football games had a lot of mistakes. It looks like at this point that Newfound is lined up in a double wing, a real tight formation. Absolutely. Looks like the triple option. And it's number 20 with the first carry. Ball given ahead to Quinn Van Lingen, and he is stopped for a short gain. In on the tackle for Franklin is number 54, Levi Elliott, coming up from his defensive tackle position. I have to say, Coach, Franklin only dressed 21 players, but they've got some big guys over there. Oh, no doubt about it. The defensive ends, they're real good-sized kids. Again, tight formation. Now they, they got a split end out there. Newfound number 33. Here's That's Dalton Dion. Single wing look. Number seven. Yeah, that was Malachi Ingram. He took the direct snap over right tackle. And again, not much there. 
Good job. Stopped by a host of Golden Tornado defenders. That'll bring up third down and seven yards to go for the Bears. Hey, what a day for football, huh? Absolutely. Unbelievable. Let's look to see if Newfoundland goes with the hard count here, try to pick up a free five yards. Let's see if they take to the air for the first time. The first two plays are on the ground. Another single wing look. Roll out. And not much going there for Keith Corvo. So this is really a single wing offense it that is. we're seeing out of Newfound. You're familiar with it. Anybody can really line up. No, any back can sort of line up at quarterback, right, Absolutely. Coach? Absolutely. It's a little bit different than what we've seen from Newfound in the past. We've seen a lot of power eye sets and that double wing look. I haven't seen much single wing. It's a deceptive offense, but at this point, Franklin has shut it down for the first three plays, and Corvo's in to punt. Let's see if the right-footed punter can flip the field here. Snap comes back. Good snap. Corvo shanks it off the side of his foot, and Franklin is going to be setting up with some super field position. Let's see where the official marks it. It looks like the official spot will be the... Plus 30. The 30-yard line going in for Franklin. So an early opportunity here on a short field, Coach. you got to like that if you're an offensive guy, huh? Absolutely. And Coach Jeff Davis said they were all spread this year, so maybe they'll come out throwing. Well, if that's the case, it'll be a contrast of two different styles because Newfound came out no line splits, one split end, Multiple backs in the backfield. You didn't know who was really going to get the gun snap. And yeah, this is a two by two spread look right and here. We're missing a right tackle, so we've got to go with a timeout here. <laughs> and that's what you talked about, Coach, in the opener. You talked about working out the kinks, working out the bugs uh, early on. N nobody had a scrimmage in the state of New Hampshire, and you're going to see mistakes like that. Not enough players on the field. Possibly some timing issues with false starts. Absolutely. It's a, it is really incredible how important and meaningful those scrimmages are to work out those kinks, like you said. Being a spread offense guy myself, I'm excited to see number three for Franklin, Zach Duville. He lined up before the timeout. He lined up in the shotgun and uh, looked like he was ready to operate a, his offense there. Good sized kid. You watched him pregame, thought he had a pretty good wing? I did. He you know, I have to say he's probably 6'2", would you say, Coach? Yeah, I would say and that. I, it looked like he had a pretty big arm, so I'm excited to see if they air it out. Just a junior, too. So he'll be back next year. That's always exciting. Real excited that the Granite State Sports Network covering some regular season football games here in the state of New Hampshire. Just a, a great endeavor and just wonderful, wonderful for the student athletes. And I have to say again, I know I said it on defense, but I'm really impressed with the size of that Franklin offensive line. Yeah, they are big. We will go yeah, over them like in just a, a minute. Looks like a Division One offensive line. We got motion from left to right, and it's a jet sweep taken a, over the right side by Damian ball Eldridge. Is out, coach. Ball is the out. ball did come out. Let's see if they marked him down. I think we got a recovery by number 22. And the ball did come out and it was recovered by his teammate Dustin Johnson, but not before Eldridge moves ahead for a nice gain of eight yards. That's what you want, coach. You know, you stay on schedule. We talk about now it's second and two. The whole playbook's open Absolutely. second and two. Absolutely, you can run, throw, anything you want. And there seems We've to be an official's time. timeout on the field. I think it's an equipment issue. Coach, it looks like they only have one extra lineman, Franklin does, so that's something to watch going forward if we've got injuries or anything of that nature. And, you know, you, you get a little concerned. It's, you know, it's, it's in the, it's about 80 degrees. Sun is beating down hard on this field, and you worry a little bit about water and making sure all those issues are taken care of. Absolutely. Again, shotgun, two-by-two two formation. Duville in the gun. Next to him. It, oh, oh, Duville on a quarterback sweep around the right side. He is hit and thrown out of bounds, but not before he makes a first down. Hey, Coach, it looks like they were trying to run speed option to the right, and I think the tailback might have gone the wrong way. Yeah, the tailback was Beaupre, and he went left, 
and Duval went right, but Duval had the, we call that the football IQ or the football sense of just tucking under and get himself a first down. And now Franklin's setting up shop about the 15 yard line. So a good looking opening drive on a short field here by the Golden Tornadoes. And coach, I have to agree, looking out here from our vantage point, it's a very good size offensive line for Franklin. They should be able to move some people around. In the gun, Duville bobbles a snap, early pressure, and he is brought down on the play by number 60, the sophomore, Sam Sanborn, coming up with a big tackle for a loss for the Bears. That's an impressive tackle, Coach. I think number 60, Sanborn, loses about six inches and 30 pounds <laughs> to Franklin quarterback. I agree. But the little man, he, he toughed it out. And you know what? It, football, it, it's a game of heart. It's a game of desire and Absolutely. effort. And sometimes size doesn't matter. This kid's playing defensive line. And uh, it does appear to be a four-man front. It is. It looks like a 4-2-5. Or a 4-4-3 four, four, deep. Yes, I agree. Again, uh, shoot formation. Two by two. In the gun. Wheel route. Oh. oh. Number th 33 with a good pass break up there. Playing the defense's right corner. Duville threw a wheel route, I believe, to number 28, Damon Eldridge. And it was just broken up, as you said, by a fine defensive play. Now, Coach, that looked like what we call switch. A switch route. Switch route is when your two widest receivers run up the hash marks and your two slot receivers from the inside, we call them the number two receivers, wheel up the sideline, trying to confuse that cover three look and get somebody open, nearly complete. But, you know, they're looking at third down and 15. Big play here on defense for the Bears. Shotgun again. Let's see if Franklin goes to a screen. Oh, they're just going to hand it off. Coach, I have to say, I like that play call because it's four down territory. I like the thinking that maybe they can pick up some of that yardage and make fourth down more manageable. Yeah, a lot of trust in 87, the senior, Beaupre, to hand him the ball third and 15 off tackle. Like you said, he got a little chunk back, but they're going to be left with fourth and 12. And you're right, at this level, usually seeing four down territory in the red zone like we're seeing now, Unless a team has that special weapon known as a kicker. Well, we don't see too many. We don't see a lot of those in New Hampshire, that's for sure. So we got two receivers to the right. This is a pistol look right here out of the gun. Again, Beaupre as the tailback. Motion on the play. Rolling out to his He's left. He's still the wide open. On the wheel route. Beaupre on a wheel. Touchdown, Golden Tornadoes. Malachi Ingram look, trying to tackle him on the goal line. Just couldn't get it done. Quarterback Zach Duville, a junior, really showing patience right there. And they wheeled their running back, Jacob Beaupre, out of the backfield, up the sideline. The throw was right in rhythm, right on his fingertips. Beautiful catch, pitch and catch. We got 6 nothing Golden Tornadoes. And let's see if they line up to go for 2 or 1 here. I can't quite, I didn't see a block come out, so let's see. It sure looks like a two point conversion to me, coach. Yeah, they stay in the gun. They're looking to go for 2. They're in the shoot, 2 by 2 formation. Duville, looking confident out there. Speed, Speed option, option right. Duvo. Pitch to Beaupre. And let's see if he got in. He is in for the two-point conversion. You like speed option. I do, especially tight red zone, Coach. It's really difficult to cover not only one guy on the edge, but two. So to our fans out there, tell me, the quarterback, who do you think he's option in there against that 4-4 look? Uh, more than likely, it's the defensive end. So he attacks downhill. That's he reads right. them. And if the end feathers out to the pitch man, he's going to keep it and go. Absolutely. But right there, way. pitch it to your bell cow, Beaupre, call it a day, yes. ain't nothing. And I think that's what they were hoping was going to happen a couple plays ago when Beaupre went the wrong way. All right. So the teams come back upfield with Franklin with an early lead of 8 to nothing. And while we have a little moment here, 
and before the kickoff, this game is brought to you by one of our fine sponsors, Country Cottage. At Country Cottage Furniture, you'll find the best value on quality solid wood, unfinished and finished home furniture in New Hampshire. Specializing in Country Cottage rustic furniture, styles, and so much more that's made right here in the USA. Visit Country Cottage Furniture at 717 Route 104 in New Hampton, New Hampshire, or online at Country CountryCottageFurniture.com today. Thank you, Country Cottage, for being a game sponsor. As Franklin looks at the kick coach, it looks like they're in a 6 by 4 formation. Again, and this one end over end, coming down to Malachi. Ingram. Ingram, he a bounces it up the middle. Does he have a seam, coach? Does he bounce to the outside? Still looking to make yards. Still on his feet. And he's going to... Oh, a late flag, coach. It looks like a dead ball foul. Did you see anything, Coach O'Connell? I wasn't able to see. It was on the far sideline. But nonetheless, an outstanding return by Ingram as he... Banged it to the middle, bounced it to the outside. Really showed a great deal of patience right there with his run. And uh, let's just see what the the person in stripes known as the Zebras or our wonderful NHIA officials call right here. Interesting call. Typically comes in the form of a hold or a block in the back, but they're discussing it. Let's see if we can get the preliminary indication here. Did you see it? Uh, it looked like a personal foul, Coach. It was okay. tough to see the personal, personal foul, foul against that's, the Bears. You know, that's, that's really gonna, a bummer, Coach. Exactly. That's going to nullify some fabulous field position. Nonetheless, the Bears... The set up shop somewhere on the 35, it yes. looks like. We'll see the mark off here. It is a big one, 15. Cuts into Malachi Ingram's return. But I think... In this kind of style offense, Newfound will be happy to put the ball in play nearly at their 40-yard line. First and 10. 7.08 to go first quarter. The Golden Tornadoes of Franklin, they are up 8-0 on their first drive of the game. Coach, it looks like Newfound's gone back to that triple option, double wing look. And we got a counter. Ooh. You know that play all too well, Coach. <laughs> ah, we had what we call... Back in wing T day, a counter crisscross. You're right. Newfound came out right there in a double tight end, double wing. The left wing went in motion. He took a pitch, and then he did an inside handoff. To number and that'll set up second down in a long four. And like you said, Coach, keep Newfound on schedule. Again, under center. Short motion. Ball carried by Dalton Dion. He's ahead for a... A positive gain. I see them signaling to move the chains, Coach. And let's move them. Big first down right there. Newfound getting back some of the penalty yarders they lost on the personal foul on the kickoff. And now they are just over midfield in positive scoring territory. Again, they come out double tight end, double wing with a fullback tight. Triple option offense. Toss to the left. Now, Coach, that was the same play, just to the other side. Sometimes we call that student body left or student body right. Absolutely. Quinn Van Lingen, he's ahead for just a gain of about a yard as Franklin. Very good defense on that play. See if you can get a coach, see if you can get what kind of uh, look Franklin's given Newfound on defense, especially against this compact double tight end look. So Pre-game, Coach Jeff Davis told us that he was traditionally a 4-3 guy, but he said they were going to give some exotic looks because Newfound liked to pack it in. So let's see what they're doing. Ingram rolls to his right, looking to throw, and now he tucks it under. And nice looking play as he's able to pick up a big first down for the Newfound Regional Bears. I'm seeing some athleticism out of this Malachi Absolutely. Ingram, the, just a junior, definitely a playmaker. It was nice to see, Coach. He rolled out, didn't see anybody open, was able to kick it into gear and head upfield. You love to see that. The quarterback not force something into double or triple coverage, have the courage to turn the corner and pick up some positive yards. Again, timeout, officials timeout on the field. Looks Let's like see. an issue with the chains. Okay, I think we're set and we're good and we're back with the Bears on offense. Short motion. Counter, Counter Chris. Chris. 
Good looking, positive football play. Is that Van to, Wingle in there? No, coach? that was Dalton Die on 33, taking the second handoff, if you will, the inside handoff. So Newfound relying heavily on their sophomore backs. Absolutely. I couldn't tell if a lineman pulled, but right now the big bodies up front are getting the job done for the Bears. They are responding to Franklin's first score. Absolutely. <laughs> hmm. oh, Look at this. Wow. Pretty looking play right there. Quinn Van Legan was starched in the hole. That's he right. He bounced off the linebacker, kept his feet churning, and he was able to get yet another newfound bear first down. They are on the move, Coach O'Connell. And that's right, Coach. Jacob Beaupre had him in the hole and had a little bit of an eye opener when he got knocked on his back. Again, Newfound says, we're not changing anything right now. The double tight end, double wing offense is working. Toss, counter Chris, bootlegs. Counter Chris. There it is again. There's the sophomore spinning Flag out of the down. tackle. So good looking gain ahead by Quinn Van Lingen. There is a flag on the play. I don't want to speculate, but I saw either a mask or a jersey going. This could be on Franklin. Coach, what I think we're starting to see is that big defensive front for Franklin starting to get tired and gassed, and they're starting to go backwards. Personal foul, uh, face this mask. face mask Franklin. on Franklin. That's another 15. Don't look now, but this drive is in response to Franklin's touchdown, and it's a dandy so far by the Bears. The Newfound's looking to set up shop somewhere around the 10, it looks. Let's let the referee mark this off. Again, personal foul face mask on Franklin. And that's going to be marked off at the tail end of the run. A solid run by Quinn Van Lingen. And let's see. This is going to, this is going to bring him inside the red zone, I believe. Let's see if we can get a ball on. From our vantage point, we are at field level, Coach. So a little bit tricky to get the exact what yard line the ball's on, but it looks like it's around the 12 yard line. Under center again, Malachi Ingram. And coach, I think the reason they're so successful right now is those zero splits you talk about. The offensive line, their, their feet are touching. There's no gaps in between them. That was a reverse pivot pitch by Ingram to Dalton Dion. I, I agree, coach, no doubt about it. They're moving them off the ball and Dion, positive yards. Positive yards, about a five-yard gain. That's going to be second down for Newfound. Big, big drive. This is totally four-down territory for them. Ingram under center. Pitch to the left side. Oh, ball, ball is fumbled. Is out. Ball and is fumbled by Van Oh, it's on the ground again. It's still alive. Is it recovered for a touchdown? Franklin it is. Franklin was not able to jump on it. And, and that's let me big tell number you, 71. Wow, Logan Haskell. The early play of the game right there to, to keep this drive alive for Newfound. My goodness. How about that, Coach? It was a big hit. I couldn't tell who made it for Franklin, but uh, they, they had a great opportunity to fall on that greased pig out there, but yeah. they, couldn't, they couldn't jump on it, Coach. And the lineman hustling right Absolutely. to the whistle. And I'll tell you, I think that number 71, Logan Haskell, deserves it after blocking his way down the field. Absolutely. You make a, a great block to open a hole, and the kid finishes the play by recovering a fumble in a critical situation. Hey, it's third down and very short. I want to say three yards to go for a touchdown. Malachi Ingram under center. Takes the snap. Motion. Counter. Counter crisscross cut down. Once again, the toss came to 33 Dion, and he went underneath the Van Lingen, and that time Franklin said no. They what will I, have none of it. And, Coach, what I like to see from those sophomore wings is a little bit more patience. Those holes are starting to open up, but they're so eager to, to run the ball forward that they're not seeing them. So in a critical, critical fourth down play here, we have a timeout on the field. I don't know if Coach Kershaw called it or if it's a, one of those uh, hydration, breaks. hydration breaks. But either way, it gives me some time to say that here in Newfound, the girls volleyball team does return home on Tuesday, September 29th against Franklin. The JV game will start at five with the varsity match at 615. 
Catch all the action at TeamOneSports.com slash the GSSN Sports Network. Also, the Newfound Girls soccer team takes on the Eagles at Kennett High School on Thursday, October 1st. The soccer kickoff is set for 4 p.m. with coverage of the game later that evening right here on the Granite State Sports Network. God, this is wonderful for the kids. They got a, a high school sports network covering all kinds of sports. You know, I grew up in Mass, and, and it was all pro sports, right? Absolutely. We didn't have MUR and Friday Night Lights and, you know, Coach, you grew up in New Hampshire. You got to be a part of that. You may have even seen yourself on Channel 9. I have to say, Coach, it's really <laughs> special. It, it really is. All right, here we go. Talking about special. Fourth down inside of two yards for a touchdown for the Bears. Malachi Ingram under center. Do they go to the air? No, he quarterback sneaks. It's all going to just depend on the mark. Let's see if he got in. Nope. And the he preliminary indication is he is short. You know, Coach, that was dangerously close to those newfound running backs coming up and pushing the quarterback, Malachi Ingram, into the end zone, abating the runner. You know, it's one of those things that maybe as coaches, and we both can maybe admit this, we, we try to cover everything in the world about football, right? But we sometimes forget to say, don't aid the running back or the quarterback Absolutely. by pushing them because... It is a penalty, and we know all too well it's how he can, we sure how do. that can hurt. <laughs> all right, Franklin is backed up. They, I like to say the shadow of their own goalpost. They're probably inside their own one-yard line. Let's see if uh, uh, Newfound can come up with a big defensive play here. I'd be curious to see if they dial up a blitz coach. Blitz coach. We have dash motion, handoff up the middle. And that's Beaupre, and his tough running... As you said, on an inside zone up the middle, he's able to get him out a little bit. Short gain of about three yards, bringing up second down and seven. And it looked like the captain for Newfound, Keith Corval, the, the junior, was able to hit him in the hole, but Beaupre so strong, he bounced right off. How about some of these Franklin offensive linemen? 63, Chris Supri, 56, good size kid, Dawson LaFrance. <laughs> The tackle, 72, Zach Hoover. Shotgun, Speed roll out. Option. Speed option left, Beaupre turning the corner, lowering the shoulder. And he is knocked out of bounds. Let's see if that's enough for a first down. It looks like it's going to be marked just shy, and that'll leave a third down and less of a yard. You know, as an offensive coach myself, you get in these second and short, third and short, you know, do you, do, you, do, you, do you play action and take a deep shot or you just pick up the first down here? It sure is tempting, especially with the way they're running the ball. You would think those newfound defenders want to come right up and make a tackle. Duville in the gun, motion, roll out to the right. He ball loses the football. It's on the ground. But coach, there's a flag on the ground. I do believe Newfound has recovered, but we have to wait and see what the flag is all about. This is a... Let's see what happens here. The referee's it, trying to sort it out. It does appear that they're ruling Franklin that covered the ball. We have... It is a hold. We have an offensive hold on Franklin... And it's not a turnover. I, I, I couldn't see under the pile. I thought Newfound had come up with it, but I guess Franklin did. And now a decision for Coach Kearsage and Coach Kearshaw. And he is declining the penalty. Bringing up second and ten. I'm a little curious about that call, Coach. It's a great opportunity to back him up on their own goal line. I agree. I agree. Had a chance to really back them up and pin them deep. Sure did. They're going to rely on their defense to defend 10 yards right here. If it was third down, it'd be a different story, but I don't know about first down. Duville in the gun. Two by two. Shoot formation. Straight drop back. Oh, looking to switch. his left. Throwing the seam ball over the middle. Incomplete to number 44, Stephen Supri Jr. And again, talk about the routes, coach. So they're going back to that switch call, coach. They must see something with those newfound outside linebackers saying maybe there's a way we can sneak it past them, air it out. You know, 
a little bit thrown a little bit high on the seam route right there maybe catchable it would have been a big time play and we'll find out right now if um, newfound football coach Ray Kershaw's decision to not accept the holding penalty pays off because it's third down and a solid 10 yards to go. Another great opportunity to go to the hard count. Let's see if Franklin does try to pick up five yards. You love you love to steal yardage, Coach O'Connor. You do. love to You love to hard count and get those high school kids to jump offside. All right, we got a... Equipment issue. I think it's a shoe that's missing from the left tackle for Franklin, the aforementioned um, number 72, Zach Hoover. And he's trying to tie it up and get us back on schedule here. When they break the huddle, it'll be third down and nine and a half yards to go. The junior, Zach Duval, the game manager out there, doing a nice job. Beaupre in the pistol behind him. Duville, hand to Beaupre. Conservative call. Off tackle, running tough. Let's see where they mark it. That's what we heard all about. Division four's great Jacob Dupre, the senior. Beaupre, excuse me, a tough runner. But <laughs> Newfound was able to string it out and get him out of bounds. I, again, the scoreboard's not functioning in terms of down and distance, but it's looking like... I think it's looking like fourth, fourth and eight. That's what it looks like to me too, Coach. You know, are they I going have, for it? Sure looks like. Oh it. my goodness, they are going for it on their own. It appears like their own 15-yard line. What confidence in the offense? Motion. Duville rolls out. Oh. He puts it on the ground. It could hey, be a coach. scoop and score. Malachi Ingram with the big recovery. Malachi Ingram recovers it, as you said, in the end zone. Touchdown, Newfound. Malachi able to come all the way from the free safety spot. And it's funny, I was just about to say, I haven't heard his name yet on defense from the center field spot. Wow. On the previous drive, it had to be disheartening for Newfound to not punch it in. But they come out on defense, pin the Golden Tornadoes deep in their own end, stay stout on defense, come up with a huge turnover on the speed option, a pitch that hit the ground, and your man, Malachi Ingram, with a big play. Absolutely. And, Coach, I don't see a block on the field. It looks like Malachi Ingram is under center. He is under center. They're going for two, looking for the tie right here. Ingram, in the, it's a it's a counter, Chris. To ball number, is out. Ball is out. Picked up by number four, the oh captain. Oh, my goodness. I don't believe it. They ran a double handoff, fumble on the play, picked up by, did you get the number it's, there? It's the captain, number four, Keith Corvo. Corvo picks up the fumble. He All rumbles into the end zone, and we're deadlocked at eight. All the way from the tight end spot, coach. Again, two times newfound, well-coached football team has hustled to the whistle and come up with big, big balls that have been That's on the right. uh, footballs that have been on the carpet. That's right. And huge, huge break right there. But you know what? You make your own breaks by That's hustle, right. right, coach? That's how you played the game. And then as we see this newfound kickoff unit come, it's all smiles. Yeah. Yeah, there's a new found, you know, I'm sorry to coin a, uh, what do you call that, a pun or something, but a new found attitude, right? That's right, that's right. <laughs> They're back in this game at 8-8. Eight, eight. We got 118 to go in the first quarter. Great defensive series right there by the Newfound Regional Bears. And I'm sure they're they're very happy to notch it up with their partners 50 miles to the south. And that's what this first weekend, right, Coach, seems to be about rivalry football games. We saw South and North go at it last night from Nashua with North prevailing. We saw Londonderry take down an outstanding Pinkerton team. How about that surprise? The Mac Plack game, Coach. The Mac Plack game. How about that surprise? Trinity from D3. Yes, last year's champion, but Trinity from D3 taking down D1 Concord. Are you kidding me? Wow. Unbelievable. And you don't see it too often, Coach, the progression year after year for that long. You know, just a couple years ago, Trinity was not playing at the varsity level. And then in Division Two, there was a big tilt, right? In Amherst. Absolutely. Where was the defending champ, Hollis Brookline Cavaliers, 
going down at the hands of an outstanding Saber defense. A I shutout, must, 20 I mean, to nothing. <laughs> I must say the defense played pretty well. <laughs> I feel yourself patting you back. I dig it. <laughs> All right, kickoff to number 44 for Franklin. He's powering up ahead. That would be Stephen Supri Jr. And, you know, I, something I like just there, you know, too often I see guys on kick return that aren't the deep returners. The ball comes to them and they fall down Absolutely. in a fetal position. And you know what? It annoys me. This kid, Supre, said, my shot at some yards right here. Absolutely. And he sets them up shop at uh, the 45-yard line. Kearsage, they love to operate the gun with great field position. Franklin getting away just there with 12 men oh. in the huddle running one off late. I think I said Kearsage. I meant that's the same <laughs> colors. I meant Franklin. All right, Franklin so. comes out again, two by two, single back, Beaupre. No, no surprise there. Duval in the gun. See if they stay on the ground or take to the air. They go into the air. Duval looks right, and he is hit and swarmed under by number 71. That's our man, Logan Haskell. He's doing it all, coach. He's pulling and blocking on offense, recovering fumbles, and now he's making sacks. Record that as your first sack of the year, Mr. Haskell. Take a bow. Coach, what I'm starting to see is Franklin attacking the the edge in the run game and going to the air. It seems like they don't have too much confidence running up the middle. And you know, it, with the with the top Division Four runner, or, or you know, that's the reputation for Beaupre. It was interesting to see him taken to the air on first down. Now they are second down and about 20 yards yes. to go. Duvel in the gun, motion, motion man is Hennessy. And it's the jet sweep. Hennessy on the jet, and he is hit and brought down by I believe number 20. And Coach, it looks like that's going to be the last play of the quarter as we're 15, 15 seconds and under. That was the senior Devin Norman did. Hey, how about that on senior day? Big time tackle. And you're right, Coach O'Connell, the quarter is tick ticking away. Mountains in the distance over the top of the scoreboard. And at the end of one, here in Bristol, New Hampshire, on the campus of Newfound Regional High School, it's the Newfound Bears, eight, and the Franklin Golden Tornadoes. Eight. Let's take a break. We are the Granite State Sports Network. Bristol, New Hampshire, on the campus of Newfound Regional. Super day for football here. Beautiful fall afternoon here in late September. We got ourselves a dandy, Coach O'Connell, deadlocked at eight. That's right, and a lot of emotions turning both ways. You know, you can hear the... We're on the newfound sideline, so we're getting kind of first-hand coaching information. Not information, but it's really... Uh, it's good to see these young coaches coaching up the kids, keeping them motivated, talking about technique, you know, teaching the fundamentals of the game. You know, there's, there's so much great things about this game, a character-building game. And I just love to hear good young coaches talking technique and fundamentals. It's awesome. Couldn't agree with you more, Coach. So, Franklin is looking at a difficult situation now. Momentum is clearly shifted to the Bears of Newfound, and Franklin's looking at a third down and about 14 yards to go. Expect to see Duval take to the airways. 
that's what I expect. But the last two third and longs, they've handed to the bell cow, and that's Beaupre. Let's see what they do here. Two by two again. Shotgun. Duval back to pass. He looks left. A little bit of pressure. And it is incomplete. Curl route. Curl route intended for number 28, Damian Eldridge, was overthrown and nearly intercepted, I believe, by Cody Laflamme. Hey, it's fourth down and long. Last time, Franklin went for it. What do you see in here? I'm really interested to see, Coach. <laughs> You know, I would think that if they're going to go for it here, I would have oh gone with goodness. a more conservative call on third down, but it looks like they're in the punting formation yes. with Beaupre back. Yes, Beaupre, the up back is number 17, Corbin Pro. Beaupre back in punt formation, standing on about his 31-yard line. Snap and comes back. It's on the ground, but Beaupre does a nice job and picks up the ground ball. He rips it downfield. Malachi Ingram feels it. He comes to the right. He's got a bit of a wall. He's turning it on. He cuts it back inside, and it's the punter, Jacob Beaupre, taking down Ingram, but not before Ingram gets into positive territory. And you know what, Coach? He was tackled on the Franklin 42, which was the line of scrimmage, so it was like a negligible play. Wow. So the, Pretty good the line of scrimmage on the punt was 4th and 13 at their 42, and the return brings it right back to that same yard yeah, absolutely. marker. Absolutely. So that's a win right there for the newfound Bears. I see all momentum right all momentum right now on the side of new, Newfound Regional. And Malachi Ingram making a huge difference on special teams. Both, honestly, all three phases Jeez. of the game, right? Offense, defense, and uh, special teams. Now, Coach, he's lined up at wow. the receiver spot with the tight end, number four. Who's Keith, in it? Q here? Keith Corvo. Corvo in it, quarterback, I believe. Let me see. In motion. Jet sweep. Van Lingen bounces to the outside, cuts it back. Big time run, but there is a flag on the play. So how about a little trickery? Like you said, Malachi Ingram has been in a quarterback on the previous drives. He lines up as the right split end, and they go with Corovo, the big junior, under center. The tight end middle linebacker. It looks like a hold on the play. Now, Coach, and I like that coming out on first down, catching the Franklin defense off guard. I love it. I love the trickery right there showed by Coach Kershaw. Very nice. Putting Malachi out wide, maybe as a smoke screen and running the other way. All right. Hey, give, give Sam a thumbs up. And it looks like a hold on mm. the Bears. So that nullifies us. That's a, a spot foul uh, infraction. So it does nullify a big first down run, but... It's still right now manageable. I believe it's not second down, it's first down. Let me look at first down and yes, nine yards, eight yards to go. In the gun, Corvo. First time we've seen shotgun spread formation out of the Bears. Corvo takes a snap. He's gonna throw into the right flat and he overshoots Van Lingen. I gotta tell you something. I think Malachi Ingram was running clean. You know, Coach, it looked like we had fades by both the outside receivers, and then it looked like a hitch route by the inside guys. It looked like it, uh, Coravel thought that he was going to get a speed out yes. or a pivot route. Or a to pivot. The out yeah, that's right. So it looked like he was leading him to the outside. Good observation. Now, the coaches, I heard them yelling that, hey, Malachi can run by this kid. Uh, let's see if they saw something and we see the exact same look. Again, Corvo in the gun. First time we've seen the Bears in this wide open offense. 8-8, back to pass Corvo. He's going to throw a screen. And nobody home. I think the screen was intended for number 33, Dalton Dion. And it, honestly, it was well sniffed out by the Franklin D. I have, hard to tell, Coach. It, either that Franklin defensive line is really tired and not able to get much of a push-up field, or they did smell out the screen. I hear you a lot on the practice field yelling, screen, screen, and you love your defensive ends to feel it, right? If they don't Absolutely. feel a hard block on them, to kind of peel back and get involved in that again. Ingram off to the right, along with Van Lingen. They're on the slot right. Spread formation. Van Lingen in the gun. Speed option. 
Number 26 to senior Normandon. Big time run on the speed option off to the right. And I think, well, coach, I don't know. You eyeball this spot. What do you think? Are we moving? Hard to tell from our vantage. It's a it, first down. Now, coach, what I really liked about that call is you have a little bit of deception because you have the slot coming in motion, pulling that outside backer in motion with them, and then they go speed off, speed option to the backside, so there's nobody home to defend it. You're absolutely right. The perimeter defender went with the motion, and they ran speed option to a wide open field. Now, look at this. Corvell goes right back to tight end, and Malachi Ingram is under center. Motion. Ingram, he might have a flag route, but he throws underneath to the tight end Corvo for a gain of nine. And there is a flag, and I'm thinking Coach Late hit out of bounds. It could be. And my goodness, would that set them up well. Uh, that's a, just a typical double tight end flood route. You're going to go read high-low. I think the tight end might have been open deep, but he took the safe throw. Ingram, a nice throw. He took the safe throw into the right flat to um, to, to Corvo, who's had a nice impact in this game already. And my goodness, it is a late hit out of bounds. And Newfound is going to be deep inside the Golden Tornado red zone. How about the resume on some of these Newfound Bear players? My goodness, Jack Corvell, tight end, middle linebacker, quarterback. It, the list goes on. It is unbelievable. Jack of all trades, love those kind That's of players. Right. You know, we have a certain coach in New England that loves those yeah. kind of players, don't I think we? He, I you think know? we do. <laughs> hey, how about how about this offensive line for Newfound? The center, Billy Murray. I'm sorry, he's the right guard doing a nice job. Sam Sanborn, we've called his number. Making some good tackles on defense. Malachi Ingram under center pitch. And not much happening there. And a big hit in the hole by Beaupre, along with the linebacker, 56, Dawson LaFrance. There are two captains, coach. Number, number 87, Jacob Beaupre, like you said, the captain. And the captain, number 56, Dawson LaFrance. So pretty much no gain there. And Newfound is looking at second and 10. Let's see if they spread it out with Corvo or they stay tight with Ingram. They're staying tight there under center. Now what I haven't seen, Coach, is that fake pitch, and the quarterback keeps it. I think mm. they're setting that Could up. Could be coming. Here's a, here's a pitch to... Oh, a great play. Van Langen, and he is hit and stormed under by number 54 for Franklin. That's big. Levi Elliott. So now, Coach, all of a sudden, is it third down? I think it is. Yeah, it's third and nine. Uh, no, I'm sorry. They're behind the sticks. It's third down and 12. Do they spread them out? Do they? I, I, I like your play suggestion here. They've been flowing with the pitch a lot. If Ingram faked that toss and booted, I'm not sure there's an athlete other than Beaupre on the field that can catch him. Yep. Let's see. And now they spread it out with Corvo. And they're going to go back to the two-by-two two set. Franklin in a three-deep look. I love the, the height of number 19. Brady McLean. It's jet action, and it's just a run here, and a beauty by oh, Van Lingen. But, but, Coach, we have oh a block in the goodness. back by number 19, who I just said. Oh, you called it's out. You called out Brady McLean because of his height, thinking he might catch a fade ball, and he may have been a little too aggressive with a block in the back here. Let's see how it all sorts out. Trying to make the touchdown block for his buddy, uh, they Van call Lingen. It, they call a downfield hold on, I think it's 19, McLean, and that's going to nullify the Van Lingen touchdown, the go-ahead touchdown. And now we'll repeat third down, but it's going to be... And this sort of goes with where we are, third in a country mile. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Coach, I love to see that kind of deceptive play calling. I think I saw a guard and maybe a tackle pole in that as well. Yeah, real nice action there. Uh, spread them out, make them think pass. Bring Van Lingen in motion, pull the guard and tackle, lead him on a jet sweep. He got the job done. He made a nice cut and got into the zone. <laughs> What's that? Corvell going to conference with Coach Kershaw. Looks like he'll be under quarterback. Under it looks center, like 
Who's under center? We're spreading them out, I think. The Bears, they're looking at third down. Well, it was a spot foul, so it's, this is manageable. Third and 13. Almost almost the same down in distance. Time ticking away. That back judge's Ooh. hand is not up yet, so they're okay. Back to pass. Corvo under and pressure. He is hit and brought down on a sack by Franklin's number five, Elijah. Daniel, just a sophomore. Big defensive play. Coach. And the uh, the pressure set up by the defense's left outside backer, number 52, Ethan McCoy, for, forcing Corvo to step up in the pocket. Coach, fourth and 21. There's not a lot in the playbook that you can kind of put your eyes on, is there? There is not. You know, uh, it could be just uh, let's see if the athlete... Ingram can win a jump ball here. And Corvo in the gun. And if you're Franklin, you have to be smart and knock this ball down so you can get better field position. I do like the matchup with McLean, though. I really do. Interesting. The free, the free safety shading over Shotgun. away from Ingram. Snap. Ingram back to pass. Free rusher. Feet. Rolls to his right. Lobs it up. It's a jump ball situation. And he's got and it. And I think Ingram made me look smart. Coming down with the ball on about the two or three yard line, but more importantly, first down bears. And that's something we go back to Mighty Might Football. When the ball's in the air like that, it's whoever goes up and gets it. Mr. Ingram and Coach Kershaw made, actually Mr. Corvo, made me look smart there. They did throw sort of a lob jump ball. And when it's one on one, you got a kid that can jump. Let's make a play. Wow, what a momentum swing. Ever since the opening short field drive by Franklin, it's been all newfound. And there seems to be a timeout on the, f no, they break the huddle. And again, they remain in the gun, even though they're, they're only a couple of let's yards see, from Pager. Let's see if they look to have the quarterback Corvell keep it here. Big kid. Maybe quarterback ISO. Shotgun, Corvo motion. He's going to run ISO it like you said, and he is just met at the line of scrimmage by Elijah Daniel. He just defeated his block and said, come into my kitchen. Now this wow. Is the center, Sam Sanborn, he's got to get those snaps up, especially in critical moments like this. We can't get down to first and goal and end up going backwards. Listen, when the snaps are high or low or left or right, in a spread, you can't read the end. You can't read the three technique. And, and it just makes it tough. You've got to have accurate snaps. Ingram under center. Motion. Now student body. And it looks like it's, is it the sophomore, number 20, Van w Lingle? Van Ling. Oh, they're marking him short. Just short, but a tough run by Quinn Van Lingen. Third and one. That tells you something, Coach, with Coach Kershaw's confidence to go to the sophomore in this critical situation. I think the sophomore's run tough. It's been on the carpet a couple times, but otherwise, he's run pretty tough here. All the newfound Bears runners have really run pretty well here. Again, tight formation, double tight, double wing. Ingram under center. Motion. He's Same going to play. give it to Van Lingren, and he bounces outside, and he gets to pay dirt in a newfound bear touchdown. My goodness, what a tough run. Unbelievable. He tried to run off left tackle, was met with some resistance, bounced it to the outside, turned the corner, running behind big offensive lineman Quinton Shaw. You know what? He's a freshman. Wow. I like to have linemen in the lineup that are freshmen. Are you kidding me? Wow. And, Coach, I have to tell you, as a former running back myself, I can't tell you how awesome it is to know that the coach has confidence in you to give you the ball down the two- or three-yard line. Absolutely. The sophomore is really coming up big for Now for the two-point, they're going to spread it out again. Corvo under center. Next to him is the senior, Devin Normandin, on senior day. Shotgun snap on the way. Corvo, speed option Double right, keeps pressure. it. He is hit. He reaches for the goal line. Let's see. He is short. And that's another great play by number 52, uh, Ethan McCoy. So, with 6.14 to go here in the second quarter on the campus of Newfound Regional, it's the Bears, 14. And the Franklin Golden Tornadoes, 
eight. Hats off to both these teams. It's been a well-played first half. Again, not much of a training camp for anybody. No fault of anyone. Pandemic, COVID-19. But these kids, they're playing fearless. They're playing tireless. And both teams are playing darn good football, Coach O'Connell. Absolutely. And what I'm most impressed with is, you know, we've got a newfound Bears team here who's only dressing 20 guys and a Franklin team who's dressing 21. And I have been really impressed with how conditioned and their endurance. You know, that's something we've seen last night in all the uh, season opener games. We, we saw a lot of issues with cramps and endurance. So, so far I've been extremely impressed. Yes. Even teams, as you're saying, even teams and games that we uh, checked in on or even our own game uh, teams with 40 50 60 in the program you know it, it, it's still kind of warm kind of year time of year and first game see a lot of cramps fortunately they weren't major injuries but these kids today so far we haven't really had issues with that and knock on wood for their health so far and excellent excellently played football game it, it looks like the officials have mandated a hydration break which i think is great that they are able to recognize that yes i think it's a really smart rule change or um or recommendation let's say by the nhia to allow for hydration um as we open up the 2020 season and this game, besides being brought to you today by the GSSN Network, also known as the Granite State Sports Network, key sponsor, Country Cottage. At Country Cottage Furniture, you'll find the best value on quality solid wood, unfinished and finished home furniture in New Hampshire. Specializing in country cottage, rustic furniture styles, and so much more that's made right here in the United States. Visit Country Cottage Furniture at 717 Route 104 in New Hampton, New Hampshire, or online at countrycottagefurniture.com today. Please visit Country Cottage Furniture, outstanding sponsor of today's NHIAA Division IV football game. And what a game it's been so far. And you know what's interesting, Coach, is a lot of the talk preseason was about a, what was going to be a pretty impressive fall mountain team. And mm -hmm. we saw them take a tough loss last night. Who did they lose? I did not check, Coach. Give us some information. Do you know who they lost to? Was it? Uh, if I remember I don't correctly, want to it was Hanover. I believe you're right. And I believe Fall Mountain was, was coming in heavily touted, and Hanover put it on them pretty good. And so I have to imagine both teams here today are licking their chops, seeing that the division is wide open. Wide open. And you know, good for Hanover in terms of they had a real tough year last year. They open up with a big win, smile on the kids' faces on opening night. Uh, Really like that coaching staff up there. They do a great job. I believe it's Coach uh, Cavallaro. Son went to UNH. All right, Newfound will tee it up at the 40-yard line. Franklin comes out in a 5-3-1-2 kick formation. I love special teams. I think big things can happen on special teams. Corvo, the junior, set to kick off. As you said, the jack of all trades. He does everything. And he's coming back. All right, whistle to put the ball in play. It is oh, a, a squib kick. An outstanding kick at that. Let's see. It is. It's recovered by Newfound. It looked like Did it go? was it number 20. Oh, it went 10. It went 13. It was, it was number 20. Wow, what a day so far by Quinn Van Lingen. I don't know if Corvo... And I don't know if he meant to do that, but he squibbed it to the left. Van Lingen fell on it. And... It'll be first and ten newfound My with all goodness. kinds of momentum already on their side. And, Coach, with the time they took off the clock on that last drive, there might not be any time left by the time Franklin gets the ball wow. again. Wow. Franklin right now. That spread look because Franklin has a lot of size, but maybe they don't have the speed on the edge that newfound has. Smart decision. Most of the first quarter, Coach Kershaw 
had a tight formation. They were running tackle to tackle, a little bit of counter, counter crisscross. Now they're going back and forth between spread football, which means attack the football field vertically and horizontally, and power football. I kind of like the mix right now on offense by the Bears. And as, as we watch Corvell get the play from Coach Kershaw, it looks like it's going to be back in the gun. Well, being where we are on the sideline, I think you're picking up some uh, valuable information for our broadcast coach. And I think you are right. I do see Mr. Corvo. And I stand corrected. No, they're under center. And I think he... Uh, I'm trying to see who's under... Oh, it's Malachi Ingram with a toss. Get a point, D. I think the toss it went looks to... like number 33, Dalt Dalton Dion. Yeah, Dion with a nice gain ahead of about six yards. And we talk offensively all the time about don't play behind the change. Chains. Stay on schedule. This that's is on right. schedule. That's Positive right. yardage on first down. And that's what a, a great offensive line can provide for you. And this offensive line has done a super job so far here in the first half of the Bears. Second down, five yards to go. Ingram under center. Double wing, motion. Pitch to number 15, that's Mark Pagani. And let's see what kind of gain he got, and we'll look at the spot. And coach, you know what's so essential to that wing T triple option look, and it's really a selfless quarterback. What we saw there was Malachi Ingram get the snap under center, pitch the toss, and then make the lead block. Wow, unbelievable. Hey, I saw old man Ryan Fitzpatrick the other night do that on Thursday Night <laughs> Football. Third down and three. I think it's four down territory. Malachi Ingram under center, about to take the snap. Oh, Franklin's set to bring a lot of pressure here. Roll out. And he's got number 15. Going deep to the tight end. No. Oh, my goodness. What a great play call with that heavy pressure. It looks like Franklin bringing six guys on the rush. So Franklin bringing the heat, as you said, Coach O'Connell. Malachi Ingram on a rollout right. He's got the tight end on a flag route or a corner route. And he just missed him on the wide side of the field. He was a bit open. And Coach, you have a lot more experience with high school quarterbacks than I do but I know that's a difficult throw to teach. Rolling out to your right on the thr on the run, rather, he looks pretty comfortable there. He looks comfortable. Like to see him turn the corner a little bit more and bring his shoulders downhill uh, and, and sort of attack it that way. But again, fourth down and three, big, big play for the Bears. Let's see if they go student body. They do to number 15. I think he's got it. I think Mark Pagani took the toss and ran over the left side, and yes, indeed, moved the chains, first down, new found. And what we're seeing, Coach, is they're not going to one or two backs. They're kind of spreading the ball around. They are. Understanding that the blocking is more important. Absolutely. We've seen Van Lingen get a ton of carries. A bit on Normandin. Definitely Mark Pagani on this drive. Malachi Ingram's carried the ball as well as Dalton Dion. So a lot of weapons here for the bit. And I, I agree what you're saying. You know, it's about scoring points and equalizing the touches. First down here, let's see if they take a shot. They run counter. Double handoff, and Franklin right there. Who made the stuff? Right there, 44. Super defensive play by Steven Supri Jr. Guess what? That big guy's only a ninth grader. Wow. A ninth grader playing out of his mind on defense. The coach, we just ticked under four minutes, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't believe Franklin's had the ball in the second quarter. You know, there was a long newfound drive and then a turnover. You know, I, I you may be, be mistaken. right. But so, it, it's, it's been all newfound. Ingram under center, motion, pitch, off right tackle. And look at the push that that newfound front is getting. Another play by Supri Jr., but not until Dalton Dion picked up about a yard. That's going to leave third down and a long seven. And we've got and a Franklin player down. I'm struggling to see the number. Can you see it, Coach? Yeah, I, I don't, so we don't want either of us to speculate. Uh... We'll just wait and see, and let's hope that the trainer from Franklin can get the young man uh, back on the field. I hope he's okay. Like to see uh, the taking of the knee by the newfound Bears here, out of respect. And let's hope that it's not a, a serious injury. You hate to see, guys. Oh. oh, it's number 44, the big receiver and middle linebacker. Yeah, I love Steven Supri Jr. He's playing real well on defense. You know what? He was able to bounce right back up. 
I don't know if he has to sit a play. Do you know that rule, Coach? I believe so. It, you know, it's it's gotten kind of fuzzy with these water, the hydration yes. breaks, and, you know, it kind of bends the rules a little bit. We had the same thing last night. So, a little bit of a break in the action. While there was an injury on the field, I believe the official said, hey, 327 to go in the second. Let's 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 hydrate. Let's water up again. It gives me an opportunity to tell you again that the newfound girls volleyball returns home on Tuesday, the 29th of September, against Franklin. The JV game starts at five with the varsity tilt going at 6:15. Catch all of the action at team1sports.com slash the GSSN network here on the Granite State Sports Network where we are giving you live high school action, volleyball, football, soccer, field hockey. It's all getting done on the Granite State Sports Network. And we are ready to resume play here and third down and a long seven for Newfound. And Coach O'Connell pointed out, and you were very right, Franklin has hardly, hardly sniffed the ball on offense in the second quarter. Unbelievable. And I'd like to get I'd like to get back to the injuries, Coach. You hate to see injuries at all levels, but especially at this level sure. where one or two injuries could really make the difference in a blowout oh, in no a competitive doubt. game. And this has been such a great game. Looks like Franklin's bringing pressure. Double handoff. Van Lingen, and he is hit in. Starched. And I think there's a flag for a possible face mask on Franklin's number 22, Dustin Johnson. Let's see if the ref saw it our way. Personal foul. Face mask. Franklin. Now, Coach, that's, that's a 15. And now they've differentiated, right? There's different levels of the face mask, I believe. That was the big one. That's the 15-yarder. Yeah, there's, in, there's sort of like held on, and then there's sort of unintentional, right? Yes, I believe so. Where the hand gets stuck a little bit. Now, what we saw there from Franklin was blitzing both of their inside linebackers. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that they feel the only way to stop this really tight newfound offense is to blow it up from the center and try to get the quarterback going backwards before the handoff. Yeah, double A gap blitz. Franklin was right there on the stuff, but an unfortunate personal foul gives the Bears a first down at about the 17 yard line. They've scored the last two touchdowns of this football game to lead 14 to 8, 244. Again, we get double inside backer pressure, it looks like. Ball on oh, the ground. Number five. It works, it's number five. Oh my goodness. Elijah Daniel, the sophomore, who's able to recover it for Franklin. Elijah Daniel. Corvo was in the gun. No, we had the shotgun snap it. He was in the gun. I think the center thought it was an under center snap, not a gun snap. It immediately went from his butt to the ground. And Franklin avoids disaster of going down by two scores. And they have the ball finally here in the second quarter. Let's see what they can do. See if they have any kind of a two-minute offense. It looks like, Coach, they're going back to the H-back look with number five, Elijah Daniel, back in the fullback shotgun look. Two backs in the backfield. Duval under in the gun. Motion from right to left. Jet sweep. And a running back. Oh, ball is on the ground. Damon Eldridge. Oh, my goodness. He was hit and taken down and not before he fumbled. And Eldridge is staying down. Let's hope he's okay. And it's the, the freshman, Steven Supre, who's Supre. able to come up huge and recover the fumble. So Supre saves the day here initially for Franklin, keeping their drive alive after about a five-yard game. Now, Coach, I've been applauding both teams for their endurance, but I'm starting to wonder if these fumbles are a product of guys getting tired. Yeah, ball, ball security. The ball is your program. Usually, usually the three keys of victory. Well, I'm going to quiz you. What are the three keys of victory that you think that a lot of coaches will say? You got to win the turnover battle. Win the turnover battle. Let's see. Run the ball. I would run the ball and score more points. Is that what you're going for? <laughs> win the turnover battle. Run the football and play great defense. I'll tell you what. 
Maybe not in that order, but we have, as you pointed out, Coach, a lot of balls on the ground today, um, and it's made for an interesting uh, first half, for sure. And you, you know what's interesting about that, Coach, is we're seeing a lot of fumbles, but we're seeing a lot of them being recovered by the same team. Yes. And we saw that in our game last night, too. Yes. You don't see that too often. No, you don't. I'm going to mark that up to some uh, really good play-to-the-whistle hustle. So, um, but you're right. Ball's on the ground, but typically so far in this game, recovered by the team who fumbled. So, Franklin, the Golden Tornadoes break the huddle here. Second down and about five. They got two minutes and eight seconds with a running clock going here. They are in the shotgun. It looks like uh, shoot or doubles. The, the tailback is offset. Now he goes back into the pistol. Motion by get... Franklin. Hand to Beaupre. Off tackle. Into the open field. Ahead for a first down. Tough run. That'll stop the clock in high school and college momentarily. And coach, we're going to have to see this Franklin offense start to move it because we've, we've only got a minute and 45 seconds left in the half. Well, they get the benefit of the temporary stop of the clock for the movement of the chains, but then the clock will spin any second now. Franklin needs to probably come out with a little bit more of a sense of urgency. It's always tough for teams that huddle. Big that's, slot receiver right here, number that's, five. That's the utility man. And there's a flag on the play, and that'll stop the action. Let's see what the preliminary indication is. And it's on the far side of the field. False start, it looks False like. False start, Franklin. Now, instead of 10 yards, they need 15. But more importantly, as you've been pointing out, the clock right now is their enemy with 131 to go. And a running time, because after the penalty, the ball's marked back in for play. Duville in the gun, motion, takes a snap, hands to Beaupre, and he bounces to the outside, and he is just running tough, and he is brought down by Corvo and Ingram on now, the play. It looks like Franklin's going to call a timeout as the refs blow the whistle. So we got yep. second down and six. Franklin calls a timeout, trying to keep their drive alive, trying to punch one in before the half and get this thing deadlocked. Well, Franklin can't forget how they were able to punch it in in the first quarter on that wheel route to the running back. Yeah, gotta believe. I mean, listen, Beaupre, the senior, outstanding back, running tough, Jacob Beaupre, comes in highly touted. But I gotta believe at some point here with the clock sitting at 108, Franklin's gotta take to the air. That's right. And they don't, are you in, I'm fairly impressed with their quarterback, um, Duville, Zach Duville, the junior. I think he does a nice job. He threw the first, on the first drive of the game, he threw the touchdown pass. Look for them to air it out a little bit here and try and, try and move the chains again. I think so too. And I, I think that both offensive coordinators might be a little bit afraid that they can't get a clean pocket. Are you seeing both quarterbacks kind of flushed out, throwing off their back foot, and that's never good. This defensive front by Newfound, led by Logan Haskell, the junior, and sophomore Billy Murray on the right side, doing a nice job. Also 66, Andrew Murray, the sophomore. Shotgun, Duval. Twins left, twins right. Motion, Beaupre. Hand to Beaupre. Around the right side. Bounces to the outside. Stiff arms. And fights his way near a first down, coach. From our vantage point. And it is they, a they first They are marking it. Now so that's that's kind of a tricky play, coach, because it's you know you want to get the first down, but you also want to get out of bounds to preserve clock. Absolutely. So we get the momentary stop of the clock on the movement of the chains. Now it's spinning with 53, 52, and counting down, and Franklin still huddling, and they're wasting a lot of time. You know, it's it's tough. We see more often than not teams that huddle are run heavy teams. And their whole philosophy is that, you know, they have to play from a lead. So we don't often see 
Spread Duvel. teams huddling. Duville over the middle. Caught on a nice on a nice dig route. Caught by Cody Laflamme. But he's short of a first down. And the clock's still spinning. And it's inside a 20. Franklin hustles to the line of scrimmage. Again, Duville in the gun. Now I have to give Duville a lot of credit for that throw. That's a difficult throw to step up in the pocket and rifle it right over the middle. This looks like the final play of the first half. And, oh. Huh. Oh, so sweet. interesting. I, Coach, I think Duvel might have got a little mixed up. He looked like he took a knee and spiked it at the same time. Now, I don't believe from the gun you can spike the ball. You know, so I let's see if there's a flag on that. So it does. I don't see any yellow on the field. I, I like don't think from the gun you can out. spike the ball. But either way, Ooh. he stopped the clock with two ticks left. And look for look for Duville to maybe try to find Mr. Bopri up the seam. And coach, it looks like you know we're starting to see some newfound players gassed. It. Most notably, um, Malachi Ingram, who's looks like he's getting sick on the field. So that's yeah. he's their uh, he's their free safety and their yes. center fielder, their athlete back there. Their, their quarterback on offense, their wide receiver on offense. Let's hope he can bounce back. Maybe halftime hydrate a little bit yeah. and feel a little bit better. But yeah. Uh, Oh, just off to our right, the young man uh, definitely uh, hurting right now. Again, Franklin finds himself down six, New just found, shy of midfield. Newfound in what looks to be some sort of a prevent look with two guys yes. back. And, and the reason that Malachi, you know, this is somewhere where they'd really like him. Duville in the gun, takes the snap, drops back. It looks like he rolls to the right. He throws over the middle, nearly intercepted by Keith Corvo. And that brings us to the end of an exciting first half here in Bristol, New Hampshire, on the campus of Newfound Regional High School, where it's the Bears of Newfound. 14 in the Franklin Golden Tornadoes, 8. We are the Granite State Sports Network, and we are excited to bring you this NHIA Division IV football contest. We will take it to halftime. Just about ready for second half action here on the campus of Newfound Regional High School in gorgeous Bristol, New Hampshire. A lake that I like to come to, Newfound Lake, just up the road, Coach O'Connell. And we have seen a very entertaining first half of football with the Newfound Bears leading the Franklin Golden Tornadoes 14 to eight. Why don't you talk about some of the first half guys that jumped out at you as performers? Well, Coach, I'd like to start by saying I don't think that the 14-8 to 8 score is an indication of how the game's gone because it has been all newfound all day. You know, we've, we've seen a little bit of everything from newfound, but it's all revolved around number seven, Malachi Ingram, and number four, Keith Corvell. And you got to throw in number 20, Quinn Van Lingen. Absolutely. He's had a big day as well. And what we've seen from Franklin is, you know, they they came in as the bigger team. They've got a, a very impressive defensive and offensive front. But we haven't seen them be able to sustain a good push. And for that reason, it looks like Newfound is winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, we've heard a lot about coming here for this broadcast, Jacob Beaupre, the senior. And he hasn't disappointed. He's a tough runner. I'm not so sure he's got enough bangs in the first half, meaning I'm not so sure that they've had long, sustained drives where this kid can take over a football game. I think we're going to see a heavy dose of him in the second half. I really do. Uh, again, as you stated, after Franklin's first drive, which was 30 yards on a short field, uh, the... Uh, Franklin Golden Tornadoes have kind of gone a little silent on offense and Newfound has taken advantage of some turnovers and they've got themselves a one score lead. And Franklin really had something going offensively when they were able to stretch the field and as you said coach, really threaten the defense horizontally and vertically. 
Yes, and I think if Franklin approaches offensively the second half by kind of feeding Jacob Beaupre the football and letting the junior Zach Duville mix in some short-range throws, they will get they will get things they will get things moving. I really do. I think I expect to see an exciting second half. Absolutely. What are you pointing out? I'm is, sorry, coach. I'm distracting you. I see two bald eagles flying. Oh going my there. goodness! You know. Where I grew up in Saugus, you might see mosquitoes, but not bald eagles. This is just breathtaking. I don't know if our camera can pick that up. I don't think so, because it's probably pointed towards the field. But you are right. They are just sort of... How did you know they were bald eagles? I'm really not much of a science guy. Well, I just took a shot in the dark, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good at football, not bird identification. <laughs> well, Franklin uh, kicked off to open the football game, so they will receive the second half kickoff moving from our left to right. Uh, missed all purpose. Quarterback, tight end, defensive specialist, and now kicker, Keith Corovo, who's had a great first half I do found, will be doing the kicking. And... He will be kicking to Mr. Beaupre, who's deep left, and I believe Dylan Hennessy, who's deep right. And the ref puts the ball in play, and Corvo puts a boot to it, end over end. Ball's bobbled a little bit and taken in by, I believe, number 22 for Franklin, Cody Laflamme. He was carrying that ball a bit like a loaf of bread. I got sure a little was. nervous. So, yeah, Coach, let's see if Franklin gets back to that speed option and mm -hmm. throwing to uh, their big back, Beaupre, out of the backfield. That's how they were able to find Pater last time. Well, they certainly have good field position to open the second half on their own 42-yard line, and they will come out in their base formation, it appears. Well, actually, uh, it's a bit of a pistol look. Once again, the pistol look with Beaupre as the bell cow, the deep tailback. Shotgun snap. And it is a handoff to Beaupre over the left side. He breaks into the open. He's down the left sideline. He picks up a head of steam. 30, 20. And he is bumped out of bounds at the 15-yard line. My goodness. And there's the Beaupre we heard about, Coach. Did you see that? He kicked it into it. Not second, but third gear. Wow. Beaupre off left tackle. Bounced it to the outside. Got himself some green pasture. Looked like he was going to break it, and he just got nudged out of bounds. But what an opening second-half play by the Golden Tornadoes. And I think we know that play call pretty well, Coach. <laughs> I think Franklin, again, went into halftime and said, you know, the carries Beaupre had, he was productive. We just got to be consistent and get him more and not turn the ball over. Again, in the gun, Franklin, Duville, Queen set, jet sweep. And what a defensive play by number 66, Andrew Murray, just a sophomore, blowing in from his defensive tackle spot. And he takes jet sweep, and he puts it away. Now what we're seeing, Coach, is the Franklin offense working that jet sweep progression. There's a number of plays you can run off of it. Generally, we see it backwards of how they've done it these last two plays. We normally see the jet sweep with the handoff to the outside, and then you come back and hand it off to your back going backward. Run the edge, run the edge, soften the middle, that sort of thing. Again, uh, two backs in the backfield. We got a lead full back. Looks like both ready the tail. Motion again. Hand to Beaupre, off the right side. He hits, spins, and he is ahead for a nice gain on the play of, I believe, seven yards. And that'll leave a third down and manageable five for the Golden Tornadoes as they have moved inside the red zone of the Bears here. Nice opening march of the second half by Franklin trying to answer the bell, trailing by... Six on the scoreboard, 10.31 to go, third quarter action. Franklin breaks the huddle. They come out single receiver to the right, twins to the left. The big fullback, Elijah Daniel, lead blocker for Beaupre. Back to pass, and Duville really kind of 
threw that one off balance. I don't believe he used good footwork on the play, and as a result, the pass was way off the mark. And I have to say, Coach, I don't think Franklin head coach Jeff Davis is doing his quarterback any favors. That's a really difficult throw. I'd like to see him give him some easier ones to kind of warm up the arm. Yeah, that was a, uh, a lateral throw to the left flat, well off the mark, and it's going to really leave a very key fourth down and a long six for Franklin. Big, big football play in the game right here. Newfound on defense. They're spying Beaupre. Let's see. They give it to Beaupre off the left side. It's a nice game, but I don't know if it's enough for a first down. Let's see. Let's see. Did Newfound come up big, or did Beaupre... Let's see, they are saying, they are saying he's just short, and that's a big, big defensive stand for the newfound regional Bears. And coach, where they went there on fourth down was off the left edge behind freshman Zach Hoover, the left tackle. Hoover had a difficult block, wasn't able to get it done. You know, they threw on third down, you know, you almost want to say, well, if they run Beaupre on third down, maybe they'd have been fourth and short as opposed to fourth and long. Either way, double tight end, double wing for the Bears. Toss off to the right side. I believe that's Dalton Dion who had a, himself a nice first half with some solid carries. Franklin Stout right there on defense holding it to a short two-yard gain. Franklin certainly has some active, very active defenders. In particular, I really like 44, Stephen Supri. He's just a Absolutely. freshman. And I think the two anchors of that defense are, like you said, number 44, and the captain, number 56, Dawson LaFrance. Malachi. Ingram there he is, hands off. Sorry, he hands off to... Number 33, that's Dalton Dion, and he is stopped again for a short gain. And now here's a big play. Franklin had a nice opening second half march. They come up a little bit short in the red zone. They don't get down. They stuff the run on the first two plays, forcing a third in what appears to be passing down, but you never know. Let's see if Corvo comes in. And they go, they do. Corvo comes in, they go spread. And if you remember, Coach, their first punt of the game was not a great one, so it's really important to get the first down here. Corvo on the gun. Shotgun. Motion. Low snap. He is hit, and he is swarmed under by Franklin's number five, Elijah Daniel. Kid has been active. Now, nobody going for it here. The Bears are fourth down, 11 yards to go. Shadows of their own goalposts. They got to punt this ball away and play some defense. Corvo goes back in punt formation deep for Franklin. None other than Jacob Beaupre looking to get the ball in the air and make a play. Either way, Franklin should get some amazing field position. Really critical for Newfound to get a good punt off, but also get a good tackle here. Meanwhile, there's a flag on the play and we have offside on Franklin shouldn't be a factor shouldn't be a factor well we'll leave fourth down and six but I gotta believe coach Kershaw nursing a 14 to 8 lead will still punt this football obviously deep at his own end now they drop back Franklin drops back number 28 Dylan Hennessy both of these guys, they're kind of going away from punt block and looking like more of a return. Although, here's some pressure. And Corvo gets it off. And it's a short punt. And it's touched by number 70, um, number 70, Billy Murray, the sophomore. And that's going to kill the ball. But what amazing field position for Franklin here to start the second drive. Looks like a net gain of about 10 yards, Coach. You know, enough, we talk a lot about offense. We talk a lot about defense. But the third phase of the game, special teams. Man, can it make a difference, right there? Absolutely. Not a good punt. Gives Franklin life. We're They're nearly in the red zone. We're seeing uh, Newfound's middle linebacker, Keith Corvell, on the sideline. So we have a sub in at middle linebacker. Again, shotgun, twins left, single receiver right. 
queen fullback. That's Elijah. And we're going to go with Beaupre. And he is hit behind the line, but he breaks a tackle, breaks into the open field, and just muscles his way ahead for what appears to be a first down. Yeah, coach, we're seeing them continue to work that progression. First, we saw the jet sweep motion with the handoff backside. Then we saw the, the true jet sweep. Now we're seeing the jet sweep with the handoff on the same side. First and you're right. One play looks like another, looks like another. It's a deceiving kind of sequential football, but it works. It works. You soften them up on the edge to run the middle and so forth. Beaupre, in the, he is the pistol back behind number three, Zach Duville. Let's see if they ride the bell cow. What I mean by that is get this kid, Jacob Beaupre, the ball. He's sniffing end zone. Shotgun, motion, Hennessy. Give to, no, it's, it was a speed option, and Duville kept it over the left side, and he is ahead for a very short gain. It's a good job by Logan Haskell making a tough tackle in open space. Now on, is it third down, Coach? No, it's second down. Second, in comes Corval. Maybe it was just a water break. So that's the thing. When you're a running offense, and I assume Franklin wants to run the football, you got to make money on first down. Now it's second and nine, second and eight. It makes it tough. You know, so they try, but like you said, they're trying to run the edge to get the middle. They're trying to run the middle to get the edge. It's a cat and mouse game. Either way, Franklin on the move, down a score. Gun, Duval, twins left, split right. Duval, motion. Fakes the handoff, speed option right. Duval on a keep. Now he pitches to Beaupre. He turns the corner. He picks up a head of steam, and he is thrown out of bounds after a first down. And wait, he got in. A touchdown. Franklin Golden Tornadoes, the senior Jacob Beaupre. I couldn't tell from my angle. Thank you, Coach O'Connell. Let's call it like it is. Touchdown, Franklin. Now, I'm sure that's going to keep... Coach Jeff Davis up at night because that is not a tr traditional pitch that you would make on the <laughs> option play, faking out the outside backer and then pitching on the corner. So we call that a second level pitch and it, yeah, it's nerve wracking, but well executed by Duval and Beaupre and now they line up to go for the deuce and they go twins right, split left, queen back is number five, Elijah Daniel. He just tends to be the blocking fullback, usually for Beaupre. Duville rolls right, option, keeps, tucks. He is hit, and he is stopped shy of the goal line, and we remain deadlocked. 14 all. Yeah, that was a good job by the outside backer, number 20, the sophomore, Quinn Van Lingle, coming up. Kind of surprised to see the quarterback shy away from the goal line there, coach. Yeah, you know, Duville made the decision to keep the rock, but he got around the one-yard line, and he saw some bodies coming at him, and, and uh, you know, they, 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 the defense did a nice job keeping him out of the zone. Maybe I think you're alluding to that he could have lowered his shoulder a little bit more. Either way, how about these young guys? We're calling freshmen names. We're calling sophomore names. These young fellows are doing the job up here for both the Franklin Golden Tornadoes and the Newfound Bears. These young players are playing real well today. And this far, it's been a story of two halves. Franklin, it seems as though they've gone rejuvenated, hydrated, and we're seeing that big front on both offense and defense getting the better push. We're starting to see Newfound come in with arm tackles, falling off the guys, missing tackles. And again, you're right, a tale of two halves. Franklin receives a second half kickoff. Decent return. 42-yard line, their own. Good field position. Drive down the field. Don't punch it in, but pin Newfound deep as they turned it over on downs. Now, Newfound goes three and out. Bad punt. Recipe. Good field position for Franklin. Give it a bow prey. Let him power his way into the house. It's all tied. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come and, on. and now that you say it, Coach, it, it does. The story is very similar to how the game first started. You know, Newfound started with a bad punt, and they were in their own end for the vast majority of the first quarter. As soon as they flipped the field, that's when they took the momentum. Newfound's got to look to flip the field right now if they want to get back in this game. Again, from where we're broadcasting this game, Coach, hearing 
right now the newfound coach is trying to as you picked up on trying to pick up the bears a lot of them uh, doubled over a lot of them a little tired some of them at this point a little down because Franklin has come out storming here in the second half we their coaches say hey we're in it it's 14 all let's stem the tide let's get on a drive let's get our body language fixed a little bit because right now the body language on this sideline which is newfound isn't good 546 to go in the third quarter it's been everything is advertised New Hampshire Division 4 football ground and pound mix in a little short pass we are up here in the North Country enjoying bald eagles enjoying lake views it's wonderful up here but most importantly in a time of COVID-19 and the pandemic we're playing high school football and it's a lot of fun you know coach we spent a lot of the first half talking about these great players for newfound i don't think we spent enough time talk, talking about some of these stars that play for franklin and we're really seeing them on display in the second half. oh absolutely they are really again coach you do it you do it well coaching adjustments things that are said and done to players at halftime not only to motivate them but to get them in a better situation short kick it's going to bounce underneath malachi ingram and, a smart and go play. out of bounds now i don't think it touched ingram and if not it's a coach's choice a re-kick five yards back or take it on the 35 yard line unfortunately there's a, there's a player down for franklin and we don't want to speculate at this point let's see what decision coach kershaw makes right now okay. and what we're starting to see coach is i think we're starting to see some cramping we're starting to see some of these guys that are playing in all three phases of the game start to cramp up start to need plays off now it's going to come down to those guys who are playing at the second level coming in and doing a great job filling in and when you say second level, let's let's let our viewers know. We're looking at roster sizes of just under 20. There aren't many second level Absolutely. football players. To my left, I see some heat exhaustion going on. I hear some headache talk going on. All related to the heat, to the lack of hydration. These players are pouring their hearts out here. Right now, Coach Kershaw decided to take the ball at the 35 yard line and come out with Malachi Ingram in the in the under center and let's see if he gets that ground game going again Ingram pitches back a toss over the right side oh my goodness to die on Dion excuse me and he is just wrestled to the ground who who made it's, that tackle it's no one else but the captain Dawson LaFrance so LaFrance storms in to make a super play, and that's for no gain. And right now, we talked about momentum in the first half being on the side of the Bears. It has shifted. Absolutely. It is absolutely critical that Newfound get a first down here so they can flip the field position. All right. Ingram under center. He takes a snap. Motion. Handoff to number 15, Mark Pagani. He breaks through the middle of the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10, 5, and he is in for a touchdown. Mark Pagani, a tough run. He bounced it to the outside, and he goes 62 yards for a bear touchdown. And just like that, an explosive play for Newfound. What a momentum swing, Coach. And, you know, I was kind of waiting on one of these because these teams that run these really tight offenses, once in a while the ball carrier will pop out, nobody will see him, and he's gone. Right then, Mark Pagani, when some defenders had gone flat foot as he appeared stopped in the hole, he bounced to the outside. He said, hey, I'm a five speed. I'm putting it into fifth gear right here. And he took it to the H-O-U-S-E house. And I have to say, Coach, in the first half, I challenged those newfound running backs to have a little bit more vision. He was able to seal that space, bounce it, and it pays off. Malachi Ingram under center. They go for two. Motion. Pitch. Double handoff. Ball on the ground. Can't return anything in high school. College, if you can go back for a deuce, by the way, for two points. But no. 87 Beaupre picked up the fumble. It's just a dead ball at that point. And we are at a stuck at 20-14 football score 
a little bit of everything in this game. There sure is. And I'll tell you, it's challenging both teams to be resilient. Hey, where's Coach Blue? Does he have it? We got some. No, I don't. Even though New found, found some energy with that big touchdown run by Mr. Pagani. We got a couple of guys on the sideline, doubled over. This is right now, when you only get a roster size of about 20, this is survival. And I have to say, Coach, getting back to what we were talking about, guys coming in, stepping in for other players, it is really a tribute to those coaches. Only having 20 players, teaching these coaches, teaching these players to play three, four, five positions. I couldn't agree more. I love the players that can bring to a coaching staff the ability to play a multitude of positions. We're seeing it all over the field, particularly in Newfound's case. We're seeing it out of Malachi Ingram. We're seeing it out of Keith Corvo. How about Mark Pagani? He didn't get a lot of carries in the first half, but very productive in his first, his first carry in the second half, he takes the mail 62 yards to the post office. Got to love it. And you know what I love about both these teams, Coach, is it's a group effort. Sure, we've seen Beaupre get the bulk of the carries for Franklin, but it's a team effort. No doubt about it. Franklin took a little bit of extra time right there on the sideline before they brought out their kick return formation. Maybe a little talking to from the coach about coming to balance and making the play and getting that ball carrier down and not letting them bounce to the outside. Okay, it looks like Ingram's gonna kick off really? and he approaches the ball with his, it's not, okay. It was a short kick fielded by Franklin Steven Supri. He did the thing I don't like. He caught it and went right down. I think he can pick up 15 yards with a head of steam, but either way, excellent field position for Franklin. Let's see their response. Let's see if that big offensive line can stay hydrated, keep getting the push, allowing Beaupre to hit those holes hard. Some of those offensive linemen, another freshman, Chris Supri, he's in. And it looks like the center, he's had a nice game, number 52, Ethan McCoy, first time I've called his name. They've really done a nice job up front. Shotgun, Duval. We got motion, Hennessy, handoff, Beaupre. He is hit after an eight yard gain. And coach, the way I'm seeing it right now, the Franklin O-line and Beaupre are beginning to send a message. I think you're right, and I think they found something with the, that motion in the outside run, whether it be bad tackling from the newfound secondary or fantastic blocking. So second down and three after a seven-yard game by the senior, Jacob Beaupre. It seems like every time he touches the ball right now, it's 5, 8, 10, 15, 20, really running tough. Queen set, shotgun. I mean, we got Beaupre in the eye and Daniel as the fullback. Motion, Hennessy, timeout on the play. Oh, we had a, a newfound timeout because I think we had a player equipment issue. And, you know, hey, hey, I think it was a mouth guard and let's be, I don't know about you, but I sank a lot of money into braces. Let's protect those Absolutely. choppers. Absolutely. And, you know, that's, that's really the kind of scary thing that we miss without scrimmages, Coach, is working these kind of kinks out because you can stop the scrimmage right away. Yes. It's scary that the game could go on without, with an equipment issue. You know, right now, not the, not the worst break in the world or timeout here for Newfound. You know, they just gave up a big first down run of seven yards. They got to figure out a way to stop Beaupre. He's starting to really pound between the tackles. He's a tough kid. He runs hard. I think so, and I think emotions are starting to run high on both teams. You know, I look out onto this field, and I know this is only the first game, and it's a bit premature, but I see a big, solid kid in Jacob Beaupre that he might be a kid that's a candidate for a Shrine nomination or for a uh, Chad East West game nomination. He, he's pretty tough. I think it's important to note, Coach, that despite this being a Division Four game, there's a lot of athletes on the field today that could compete at all levels. Let me tell you, in 2012, I coached the New Hampshire Shrine team over Vermont, and some of the better players on my 
team in that game were from Division 4 and at the time 5. And the Division 1 kids were really proud of them and really spoke highly of them. All right, shotgun. Duville, motion, Hennessy, give to Hennessy, bobbles the ball, picks it up, and he is hit, and he is dropped on the play initially by Newfound's number 71, Logan Haskell, who's had himself a whale of a football game. And, and he was, I think the tackle was finished by the sub, number 14, Thomas Talamini. Thomas Talamini coming off the bench, just a sophomore, and taking him. What do you now? You call it uh, the yard for law. You call it a TFL a coach. TFL. TFL. Tackle for loss. Yes. Oh, I love those if you're a defensive Absolutely. guy. <laughs> Hate them because you know, I'm an offensive guy. Hate them, hate them. <laughs> that's where my identity is as a coach. I love having a, you know secondary players that can get tough and make TFLs. Absolutely. It's not just about covering the pass. Twins right, split left, gun, Duval. Snap. Hennessy in motion. They're going to give it, fake it to him. They're going to throw a wheel route. And it's caught by Beaupre. There is a flag down. He's ahead for a first down. That's the one they got the touchdown on in the first quarter. But let's see. This could be coming back. You know, I, I've been asking for the Franklin coaches to come back to that because it was so wide open for the touchdown in the first quarter. I'm glad they did. You know, it's also an easy pass to get that quarterback in a rhythm. So let's see. Right now, referees are talking to each other. And the indication is... Offensive pass wow. interference on Franklin. And my, you know, my. More than anything, Coach, you know, that could be an indication of just the difference in size. Sometimes a bigger body will push a smaller guy out of the way. Well, that's going to nullify a big play and, more importantly, a Franklin first down. And they're going to be backed up. <laughs> Offensive pass interference. I don't want to speculate who was on, but, you know, possibly the gentleman who made the catch, Mr. Beaupre. Either way, love how he fights for the ball. Absolutely. Really do. And, uh, and what we saw there, Coach, was I'm not sure if it was a misalignment by Newfound or they were sending a safety blitz, but number 15, Mark Pagani, came in late. Maybe it's just that he's tired from scoring that 60-yard touchdown. He came onto the field late? I uh, came in from the secondary to, okay. to blitz. So now it appears to be for Franklin, third down, and what we'd like to say in one word, forever, but in reality, it's 27 yards. And, you know, we've seen them third and long just simply say, Beaupre, run the ball, get us half of it back, and we'll go for it on fourth. Um, it, so don't necessarily think right now it's air it out time. It might be a mindset like, let's see what Beaupre can get. I don't know. You know, we've been fortunate to not see a lot of penalties in this game, but this is a crucial time where Newfound cannot have a defensive penalty and bail this Franklin offense out. Little lull in the action right here as Franklin huddles up. I'm not sure what the delay is. But in either case, Newfound nursing a 20 to 14 lead, looking to stuff them right here. Franklin spreads them out. Duval in the gun, takes a snap, runs the option, gives it to Beaupre. Beaupre around the left side. Beaupre in front of his own bench. Beaupre ahead for a Franklin. First down. And, and coach, now I'm starting to see what that Franklin offense is seeing. When they're bringing that uh, receiver in motion, the outside backer is coming up and blitzing, which is allowing them to run that speed option to the back side because there's only one defender there, meaning that they can pitch the ball and Beaupre is out free. So the outside backer on the perimeter, when motion goes away from him, he reduces down to like an end That's spot. That's right. And they're and, just uh, they're taking advantage. And he had a one-on-one -on -one with number seven, Malachi Ingram. Ingram wasn't able to make the tackle. He's able to pick up a big gain on third and forever. Wow. What a big turn of events right there. Franklin, first and 10, 47-yard line of the Bears. Duville in the gun. 
Twins left, motion, Hennessy, shotgun snap, hand to Beaupre. He bounces to the outside. He turns the corner with a head of steam, and he is hit and bumped out of bounds, but not before he picks up 12 yards and a first down. Now, this newfound defense is really relying on great play by those outside backers in the free safety, Malachi Ingram. Right now, we're they're struggling to get tackles, and it's allowing that lead blocker, at H-back number five, the Elijah the Daniel. Fella, Elijah and, Daniel. And the receiver in motion to lead the way so that um, oh, Beaupre can come oh, untouched, run untouched. I don't have the official game stats, but I got to believe Mr. Beaupre is approaching 150 yards on the ground. And he's done some damage with a touchdown catch Absolutely. in the air. So he's really been... Uh, an all-purpose back for the Franklin Golden Tornadoes. He's everything is advertised. Shotgun, Duvel, split right, twins left. Now they empty out Daniel, and he's in the slot. Back to pass, Duvel, swing pass, Beaupre, man to beat, does. Bounces to the outside, stiff arm, turns the corner, all the way down to the 22-yard line. Now this, goes. this is what I've been waiting to see from that Franklin offense. These are easy throws that we can get those athletes in space. Beaupre there able to break two tackles and then outrun another guy. Absolutely. Get your athlete in space. Stiff arm, man to beat. Got it done. Kid right now taking over the football game. As everything is advertised. Coach, as one of our coaches would say, catch and stretch. Catch and stretch with a little power swing to Beaupre. All right, Duval in the gun once again. We have twins right, twins left. Single back, Beaupre. Hennessy in motion. Hand off, up the middle, Beaupre. Oh man, lowers his shoulder. He is ahead for a gain of seven, eight yards. You know, seeing a lot of dust out there, right? Dry field. Absolutely. Usually we say, we say three yards in a cloud of dust. But in the case of Beaupre, Jacob Beaupre, more like 10 yards at a cloud Absolutely. of dust. Kid is dominating. And what I'm seeing is a lot of one-on-one -on -one tackling situations between linebackers and number 87, Beaupre. That's happening as a result of that defensive line not getting any push. Again, Franklin spreads them out. Two receivers on each side. Duval takes the snap, hands the ball to Hennessy. He cuts up field, and I think he's ahead for a first down. He made a nice 90 cut instead of bouncing that to the outside, feeling the flow of the defense, and, it, and indeed it is a Franklin first down. <laughs> 222 and counting here in the third quarter. I, I would anticipate Franklin to keep riding their bell cow back. And mix it in a little jet sweep on the way. Again, shotgun, motion. Let's see if New can come up with some big tackles. Flag, speed option. What a absolute saving catch by um, Beaupre on a really ill-advised pitch by yes. Duville. And I, I, I have to say, Newfound showed a really great job defending the speed option there. The quarterback didn't have anywhere to go with the ball. So in that situation, we had two men in motion, flag on the play. Got to believe Newfound takes this penalty because, well, let's see, two men in motion, and they will accept the penalty because Beaupre, who reached back with his right hand on a pitch that was far behind him, made a spectacular play to catch it with one hand and get ahead for like... The big yardage. Especially with Bert, number 19 and newfound Brady McLean all in his face. Unbelievable. So right now, I'm seeing the Franklin offensive line wearing down the young newfound Bears and a little bit undersized, right, newfound Bear yes. front. And this is, again, a situation where newfound has got to get off the field on defense. they got to break with the penalty. First and 15, Duville back to pass. Got a sub. He throws into the flats, and it's caught, but for really no gain to, um, to Hennessy, Dylan Hennessy, just a freshman making an impact in this game. He's probably come in motion on every football snap. So what we saw there, Coach, was uh, the bell cow back, Beaupre taking a play off, just getting some water. They go to the just air. Just the blow. And I have to say, I don't think I've seen Franklin pass to their right yet. It's all been to the left, something that the newfound defense should key in on. Big play, second and 16. 
Franklin looking to get a little some of it back to get in manageable down and distance. Back to pass Duville. Over the middle of the big tight end. It's intercepted by Malachi Ingram from his safety position. And he fumbles the football. And I don't know if it was in or out. Let's see if it's a good recovery. I don't know. Right in front of us, Coach O'Connell. How'd you see it? It looked like the ref signaled out of bounds, but that is why every defensive coordinator stresses going to the near sideline after wow. you make the interception. So let me review. Malachi Ingram intercepts the football and on the return fumbles, but I believe the officials say he was out of uh, it was the ball went out of bounds before Franklin recovered it. And it's going to be newfound football once again, thwarting a Franklin drive. And I have to say, Coach, I think that was a product of number 87, Beaupre, being tired, taking the playoff before, coming back in. Coach is recognizing that he's gassed and them going to the air. Well, while we have a hydration break here in the action, we're going to take it to commercial. It is a dandy here in Bristol, New Hampshire with the Bears of Newfound leading 20 to 14 on the GSSN Sports Network. back to this NHIAA Division 4 football game. The opener, the newfound regional Bears leading currently the Franklin Golden Tornadoes 20 to 14 in a back and forth slugfest. A lot of turnovers, a lot of wild plays. This game today is being sponsored by our friends at Country Cottage. At Country Cottage Furniture, you'll find value on quality solid wood, unfinished and finished home furniture in New Hampshire, specializing in country cottage, rustic furniture styles, and so much more that's made right here in the good old USA. Visit Country Cottage Furniture at 717 Route 104 in New Hampton, New Hampshire, or online at countrycottagefurniture.com today. Thank you, Country Cottage Furniture, for being a game sponsor. Well, Coach O'Connell, we drove up here. We were in separate cars. We both came from southern New Hampshire. The foliage was wonderful. Did we really expect a game this good? Uh, well, I was worried I was going to be able to get a parking spot with all the traffic going through Concord. <laughs> but it's been an incredible game, Coach. I don't know that I can pick which team has been better. Listen, we, being from the south of the state, see a lot of D1, D2 football. But you know what? They can play the darn game up here as well. This is some kids, not big rosters, Anywhere from freshmen playing varsity football, pouring their hearts out for this school right now, and I love it. Okay, Malachi, Ingram, under center, first and 10, Bears, 30-yard line. He pitches the ball to, oh, wow, he pitches the ball to Mark Pagani, who had a beautiful 62-yard touchdown run, and he is starched in the hole. I think it was Dustin Johnson that made the hit, but... Ingram ahead for a gain of three. Again, in this kind of offense, right, that's kind of on schedule, would you say? And it looks like that's going to take us down to the quarter, but, you know, Newfound is right where they want to be, running the football, staying on schedule, killing clock. You're right. Five, four, three. We're ending the third quarter. It's been a dandy. The Bears of Newfound 20 
and the Franklin Golden Tornadoes 14. Today, we are live on the Granite State Sports Network. I'm Mike Bellevue, former 18-year head coach of the Sauhegan Sabres, and I am absolutely overjoyed to have as my partner and color commentator, Coach Brandon O'Connell, who is the current assistant defensive coordinator at Sauhegan. And I'm just going to tell you right now, had a lot to do with the shutout last night over Hollis Brookline. I mean, we stopped, you stopped, you coordinated a great defense that pitched a shutout, stopping two pretty darn good backs from Hollis Brookline. Thanks a lot, Coach. I uh, learned a lot from you, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate being here. Most people don't know that you coached me from third grade to my <laughs> senior year of high school. That makes me old, but yes, <laughs> you know, it makes us it, both old. it's got to be, it's got to be, you know, listen, you were a Pop Warner player, coach, and a high school player that poured your heart out. You went up and played a little bit up at St. Lawrence. That's good level division three football. I think the Liberty League, right? And, and then you come back and you're in the community and, 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 and you're giving back. It's called paying it forward, right? And, you, and you're coaching at Sauhegan. I think you're in your fourth season, third or fourth season, and a major, major role on the defensive side of the ball. And now, today, your, your debut in the broadcast booth, and I got to tell you, you're doing a super job, and I hope, I hope, you know, doing this sort of thing, kind of seeing the media side of it, you're enjoying it. Oh, I absolutely love it, Coach, and it's a good thing that, you know, they're not broadcasting a picture of me because I am bright red and as nervous as can be. Well, none of those nerves have come out because I think we've been distracted from our nerves by pretty darn good football here today. Right now, Franklin, listen, they're riding their, their senior running back, Jacob Beaupre. But they've been snake bitten by turnovers. It seems like, you know, I look at the scoreboard and Franklin has 14 on the board. And I think it could be double that. However, Newfound mixing it up between double tight end, double wing, kind of power football, ball control, and then spreading it out a little bit. Uh, with Keith Corvo, although he's on the bench right now, so that may be a factor. Back under center and rolling out is Ingram. He is going to run the football, and now he is taken down, yelling for either a face max or a horse collar, but it doesn't appear that the officials saw it or called it. it I have to say, Coach, I like that call coming out of the break, you know, between the quarter. You have time to talk about it. You have time to talk about it if it goes wrong. And I like to see Malka there tuck it and get positive yards on second and medium of shut up, set up, third and short. Yeah, and, and more than just setting up third and short, as you said. I think it's set up four down territory because they're like third and a yard. And so, you know, you got to feel like they're going to try to pull some air out of this clock. And I think... Ingram on the center, takes a snap, handoff, Pagani in the hole, breaks it again, head for a first down, not for a saving tackle by number three, Zach Duville, the quarterback. I have to say this, number 15, Pagani, he's elusive. He really is. He has given them some good bang for their buck, no doubt about it. I think... He takes hits and keeps on ticking. I really do. I think we're starting to see Newfound run left because of the right tight end, Keith Corvell being out. And with Corvo being out, he seems to be their gun quarterback, the one that can throw the football and, you know, run the option stuff. Um, they're pretty much content right now to try to kill clock with a six-point lead, stay in their double tight end, double wing set, and just run their toss and their counter crisscross. Let's see. Under center, Ingram. Malachi Ingram, short motion, hand to Dion. He is hit and stuffed for no gain. Once again, for Franklin, Elijah, Daniel, and number 56, Dawson LaFrance. Those two we've called their number all day long. My goodness, I have been very impressed with number 56, Dawson LaFrance, the yes. captain. He's good. He's got a great, great nose for the football. 
We are now inside of 10 minutes, and Coach Kershaw and the Newfound Bears, they couldn't be happier that this thing's ticking away. Uh, they're trying ball control. They want to ride this thing to the end. And Newfound, they're just trying to protect the football and avoid penalties, stay on Ingram, schedule. You're right, Ingram under center. Takes a snap, short motion. Once again, Pagani bounces to the outside, and this time he is taken down after a gain of three. And in on that play for Franklin is number 54, Levi Elliott. We've called his name a couple of times today. So this is interesting. Third down and six. Do they keep it on the ground and keep the clock moving? Or do they take to the air? Or maybe it's both. Maybe it's Malachi Ingram rolling out with an option of running and passing. Let's see. Not to mention, Coach, with Keith Corville being out, I don't know who their backup hunter is. Well, that's, that could come into play. Special teams has been huge already in this game. Double wing, double tight, under center. Short motion, dropping back is Ingram. He throws over the into the right flat, and it is caught for a short gain by number 22, Cody Laflam. And, you know, it's going to bring up a decision here for Coach Kershaw. He's got a fourth and four from, it appears, the 48-yard line of Franklin. Now, do you punt and pin him, Coach, or do you go for it, and maybe if you don't get it, you lose field position? You know, with... With respect to Newfound's punt game, I would go for it. And you know what? I think Coach Kershaw heard you. I believe the Bears are going to go for it. And, you know, if they convert here, tick, tick, tick. Yeah, They're absolutely. loving it. So let's see. Or Franklin gets a lift with a big stuff. Big play in the football game right now. 8.07 to go. Ingram under center. Short motion. Pitch. Double handoff. Crisscross. Pagani hit behind the line. Minus three. Another TFL. And Who Franklin else? takes over. Who made the play? Who else but the captain? Wow. Number 56, Dawson LaFrance. Dawson LaFrance, he's seen that play one too many times today. That could be a momentum swing. Beaupre, let's see if he's back on the field. No. Another thing that's interesting, Coach, is we've seen both teams go for two <laughs> every time they've scored. And yes. we've only seen each team convert one. That's true. There's nothing that's automatic about taking the lead should Franklin score here. Franklin comes out of the huddle, twins to the left and to the right. Shoot formation. Beaupre in the pistol. Spread eye tailback. Shotgun. Handoff. Beaupre right side. Bounces to the outside. Cuts it back. Gets into the open field. 30, 20, 10. All the way down inside the 10-yard line goes Jacob Beaupre. My goodness. Wow. He may have eclipsed 200 yards, but obviously he's more concerned with trying to punch it in and getting this thing the lead uh, for his team. My goodness. And Beaupre, as he should be, giving a chest bump to his right <laughs> tackle. Wow. Mr. Dawson LaFrance, who paved just about a highway for him. Both. So Dawson LaFrance, the captain, giving it to him on both sides of the ball. All over the field defensively and a big play right there on leading way. Again, two receivers to the right. This time, two backs in the backfield. Indication that it could be Beaupre off tackle. And it is. Running tough. Bounces to the outside. Ten. Turns the corner. Five. Oh. Four. And he is in. However, there's a flag on the play. So, hold your hats here. And I think that's going to go the route of personal foul, Coach. We got a newfound bear shaken up. He was able to get to his feet. That's Dion. And he walks off gingerly. Beaupre ran off tackle, bounced it, and took it to the end zone. And it was, but I don't think it's going to count. And it was the freshman, number 44, Steven Supre, trying to make the touchdown block, but it looks like he didn't get him square. So it looks like a block in the back, and that nullifies a tying touchdown. My goodness. And once again, Franklin moving the ball up and down the field, but shooting themselves in the foot with penalties. Dang. And turnovers. And especially at this level, Coach, those those block in the backs can be such a bang-bang play. It can be a matter of half a second. This ball is going to come all the way back to the 22-yard line. 
And as you heard the PA announcer, Coach, it's not first and ten. It's first and goal. So Franklin cannot make a first down. They got to punch it in. Something that they certainly want to do. Let's look to see if they go to Beaupre through the air here on one of those swing passes. Could be setting them up for that. Duville, gun, hand to Beaupre. He is hit behind the line and he is taken down, but there is a flag and I don't know. I'm hearing face mask, not sure. Again, we'll wait for the referee signal. They could get 15 right back here if they feel it was a personal foul. That time, not much line blocking on the right side, and Beaupre got hemmed in. And if I'm not mistaken, it was it was the sub, number 14, Thomas Tolemi, who shot the gap and was able to make a good tackle, but it looks like... Yep. <laughs> Personal foul. New found. Face mask. 15. Yard. Penalty mark off. I don't believe it's half the distance to the goal. I think... I think they're marking 15, and we will repeat first down. And now Franklin, with a much better outlook here, first and goal. Ball resting on about on about the 12, I think, Coach O'Connell. And that'll spin the clock. We are now inside a 7.30. And you know, Coach, we haven't seen a lot of penalties in this game, but what we have seen, they've been the big ones, the 15-yarders. Oh, they've been big penalties, and they've come in big situations. Yes. I mean, Beaupre a few minutes ago just ran one into the end zone, called back, only to have a face mask and get Franklin a much more manageable down and distance. Shotgun, Duville, Beaupre to his left. Motion. Slide motion. Duville staring at him, but he throws... Yeah, well, on a fade route to number 28, that was Damian Eldridge. He didn't even seem like he was expecting the stone. The no, ball. and he should have because it's a great call by Coach Jeff Davis. All the focus right now is on Beaupre. Yes. He's able to sneak the inside receiver, number 28, out. He's wide open, but he wasn't expecting the rock. He just wasn't expecting it. And I, you know, you got to be ready. You got to, you know, you don't get many throws your way, right? And Absolutely. you got to be ready when your number is called. So now it sets up second and goal, I believe 12 yard line. Franklin breaks the huddle in their traditional spread gun formation. Duville. Queen eye pistol formation motion Hennessy. Give to Beaupre. Bounces to the right. Turns the corner. And he is down and in for a touchdown. Jacob Beaupre, his third touchdown of the day. He is having himself a whale of an opener. We are deadlocked at 20. And my goodness, that's a heck of a job blocking by the right guard, right tackle, and number 44, the freshman, well, Stephen Supre. I don't see a kicker coming on the field. So, needless to say, it's another very nerve-wracking two-point conversion try. We are deadlocked at 20, just under seven minutes. And what I don't see is Newfound packing the box. I think it's telegraphed run. Bo oh, they I Oh, they went to the fullback, and he powers his way in. You know what? Elijah Daniels been blocking his butt off all day. Let's reward him, sticking in his belly. He almost backed his way into the end zone. The Golden Tornadoes are up 22-20. Wow. And they've asked a lot of Elijah Daniel today. He's played at receiver in the H-back as a lead blocker and done a heck of a job on defense. You know, right now... I'm seeing a dominant run game clearly by Franklin and to be honest, Newfound has a few key bodies on the sideline and their depth is becoming a factor and it'll be interesting to see how they respond on their next possession offensively. If I'm coaching them right now, I'm saying one thing at a time. Let's get a kick return. Let's set up shop in good field position. So that is a very important special team play coming up. And as we've seen, this newfound offense, especially without Keith Corville, 
is taking yards at a time. It's not getting big chunks. Right. So they've got to commit to getting the four or five yards. There's plenty of time on the clock, just under seven minutes. They've got to stay true to who they are as an offense. Couldn't agree more. Will they be patient and take three or four at a crack, or as we like to say, three or four in a cloud of dust, move the chains, and have enough time to drive, you know, 50, 60 yards into the end zone? All right. Kicking off for Franklin is Steven Supri, the freshman. Let's see if he kicks away from Elijah Ingram. No, he goes right at him, but it goes out of bounds, and decision time for Coach Kershaw, 35-yard line or a re-kick from five yards back. Interested what you would want right here. Coach, I'd take the 35-yard the line. And so I'm going to disagree with you and say um, back him up, see if Malachi can get his hands on the ball in space and be better than the 35-yard line. However... I don't think a decision's been made yet. So we differ on that, but you know, and I either way, I think it's gonna result in good field position for the Bears. And just looking out at this Franklin defense again, the size is overwhelming. Oh my goodness. And you know, what we saw in the first half was a, a Franklin unit that was tired, and it seems as though they came out of the second half ready to go, juiced up, hydrated, and they are maximizing their potential. So I'm not quite aware of this rule, but they marked it on the 41 because it went out of bounds on the 41. So maybe it's um, it comes to the 35 if you get it past the 35. I'm going to speculate either way. Great field position, Bears. Plenty of time. My goodness, people on the edge of their seats. Shot uh, under center. Give to uh, uh, give to Mark. Pagani, who had the big touchdown run to give them the lead, and Pagani gets ahead for a gain of, of about two. It's a tremendous open field tackle by number 22, Dustin Johnson for Franklin. Called his name a few times today. Done a nice job from his secondary position. All right. So Newfound, not in any hurry. Malachi Ingram getting signals from his coach. Newfound taking their time. I think they've seen that their defense is a bit gassed and that Franklin's running all over them at this point. So they might just want to try to eat this clock up and have a shot at the end. Either way, second and eight, big play. Double wing, under center, Malachi Ingram. Fullback, three yards behind the quarterback. It is Ingram on a rollout. He is hit, and he is taken down on the play by Dylan Hennessy and a host of his buddies from the Golden Tornadoes. Now that time, it looked like Ingram rolled out and there was no receiver to be found. From the looks of the coach, either the outside backer held the tight end at the line of scrimmage mm -hmm. or he forgot to run his route. You know, I know I hear you a lot say, jack up the tight end, don't let him off the ball. It might have been that way. Either way, third down and 10 for the Bears. Critical play. And this is We not, are now at 519 to go in the contest. This is not where the Bears want to be. They do not want to be in third and long. We have a flag on the play. Let's see what the indication is. We got an offside encroachment call on Franklin. You know what? That's a free five. It is. And what does it tell me? It tells me two down, ter four down territory. Can we use two downs to make five yards and keep this drive alive? And you look at the Franklin defense, they're not respecting this newfound pass game. They've not got everybody all. in the box. They have got Six backers guys on the up. line Oh, my goodness. They have a crowd in the box. They go to Pagani. He bounces to the outside, and he is ahead for a bear first down. And you know what? They're running right into the teeth of that pressure. Still able to find a hole somehow. Absolutely agree with you. At this point, Franklin has zero thought that Newfound's going to throw. And they are bringing not only their backers up tough, the D-backs are now within, what, five yards of the line of scrimmage. They're definitely playing with eight in the box and really um, putting pressure on the Newfound run game. And just then Pagani responded with a huge first down. Got to keep an eye on the clock, Coach O'Connell. 
We're seeing a lot of toughness from this undersized newfound offensive line. I think that, you know, Newfound's Keith Corvo, you know, a big loss in this game in the second half. You know, I see him kind of holding his head. I don't want to speculate, but, you know, whether it's the heat or whether it's a possibility of, you know what, the concussion, let's be safe. If in doubt, sit him out, right? And, and the biggest loss for that Newfound offense is how dynamic he is. He is. lines up at tight end, running back, quarterback. He really allows that bear offense to open itself up and throw the ball. Well, we have a timeout on the field. Let's set the stage. 4.04 to go here in Bristol. We got a two-point lead for Franklin. The Golden Tornado's up 22-20. Three touchdowns on the day for Jacob Beaupre. But the newfound Bears, patient, good field position, on the move. Can they get it done at home? Let's take it to a break as the players hydrate. We are live here in Bristol on the GSSN Network. We're back live here. Let's set, well, we already set the stage on the school board. Let's set it as far as down in distance. Positive 46 yard line for the newfound Bears. First and 10, 404 to go. You hear both coaching staff saying, play with heart, finish the game. We got ourselves an absolute whale of a football game. I wouldn't want it any other way, coach. Ingram under center, motion. Roll out, quarterback schoolboy right. He is, he's in the open field. He breaks a tackle. Malachi Ingram ahead and he stays down momentarily ahead for a 19 yard gain. Just getting to his feet. I don't know if it's exhaustion or, or an injury, but there's a response to play with heart. First down, 28 yard line. Newfound on the move. We've got some tough football players here. My goodness, it looked like he was going to be hit for a loss. He spun away, broke two tackles. I know. I, Damian Elders, number 28 for Franklin, coming in hot. And Clock ticking. Here, uh oh. Now what happens? I think. Both quarterbacks are out, coach. Oh boy. There's. Oh boy. Uh, Ingram. Coming to the sideline, kid's been a warrior. He, let's tell it like it is. He's right now sick. He's doing his best to try and grind this out, but he at this point is really hurting. And I am, as a broadcaster, as a football coach, you know, I'm looking at a kid like that. That kid's giving it his all for his school and no, for his team. No question about it, coach. It's, you know, you don't want to see a kid getting sick physically and we're talking you know about water coming out and all of that but let me tell you trainers with him he's doing his best and now we have the third quarterback for newfound mark pagani who ran the long touchdown run let's see if he can get a good snap he doesn't it's on the ground however there's a false start on the bears so, first and 10 turns into first and 15. And you know, coach, that's kind of to be expected. A tough situation for Newfound here. But if Pagani can, if the junior can figure out a way to get these snaps, and who knows how many reps he's had at the quarterback position, right? He's a runner. But if he can get these snaps, get a little rhythm here, you know, it's only first, I'm sorry, is it first and, yeah, first and 15. You know, you make first downs, you keep working your way into the red zone. Plenty of time, plenty and of time, as, 244. As we know, Pagani has the potential to hit the home run. 
Pagani gives to a new back in the game. Wow, that was Thomas Talamini, the sophomore. And you know what? He's ahead for five, so he gets the penalty yardage back. Coming in, making a couple plays on defense, now working into the offense. Second and ten. Clock moving. Newfound trying to, you know, conserve their timeouts. Coach Kershaw, certainly no stranger to fantastic finishes. He's been around this game a long time. A little concerned with how long it's taking in the huddle for the Bears. Pagani under center. Motion. Hand to the sophomore. Bounces to the outside, but nothing doing. Franklin swarms him under. That was, again, Thomas Talamini. Big and play call that's a loss. It is now third and 11, Coach O'Connell. <laughs> what do you dial up, Coach, third and 11? Come on, Cody. Well, defensively, I'd bring the pressure. If they have the ability to pass it, you almost have to at this point. That or you've got to get Pagani on some sort of quarterback sweep. Just a, you know, unfortunate. You got Newfound on the move, being led by Malachi Ingram, doing an amazing job, trying to gut it out. He didn't feel well as early as the second quarter, right? Try to recover at halftime, having a good drive, and now he's on the sideline trying to get trying to get hydrated again. All right, under center, Pagani, double wing. Snap, fakes the toss. He rolls out right. He throws into the flat, and it is knocked away by Dylan Hennessy of Franklin. Sorry, that was Damon Eldridge. And you know, we have to applaud this newfound offense who has worked their butts off. Uh, I, I think, excuse me, I think I've been, and I apologize for this, I think I've been calling Damon Eldridge, number 28 for Franklin, Newfounds number 28, Dylan Hennessy. So I apologize. I'll get it right. Unfortunately, there's only 54 seconds to go in the football game. We are fourth down in about a long 11. And quite honestly, Coach, it comes down to this play right here. I think Newfounds going to have to have something really special happen if they want to stay on the field. But again, that's how they've scored two of their touchdowns with the high jump ball and the 60-yard touchdown. Well, we do have a big tight end on the field. You called his number earlier. That is Brady McLean. Back to pass on a rollout. And he looks to run. And that's Pagani. And he is hit. And he goes to a knee. And he is far short of a first down. And he a bit emotional on the field, throwing some fists into the ground. And that's just a high school competitive kid, you know, really trying hard to make a play and getting a bit frustrated. Either way, coach, turnover on downs. Turnover on downs. Franklin football. You know, I have to say, looking at, and I've said this all game, but when you look at this Franklin team relative to the Newfound team, Newfound is undersized at every position, and they have fought like heck and played an incredible game. I couldn't agree more. You know, it's if they don't end up winning this football game, I think there's a lot they can take from the loss. I think they played with a lot of heart here today and certainly have had some tough breaks. Shotgun, taking a knee is the junior, Zach Duville. It appears that the clock continues to run. And I think Newfound recognizing that they don't have enough timeouts to really, uh, they don't have enough timeouts to get the football back is going to accept the knee here. And that is going to bring us to the end of this outstanding NHIA Division IV football game as Zach Duval takes the second knee. And the final score as the clock ticks to zero is the Franklin Golden Tornadoes, 22, and the Newfound Regional High School Bears, 20. Outstanding football game highlighted by Franklin great senior tailback Jacob Beaupre
in his offensive line coming to life in the second half and really controlling the line of scrimmage coach seemed to be the difference in the game. You know, and the play was a lot less sloppy than I anticipated. I anticipated several turnovers, a lot of penalties, because that's what's happening at all levels right now. That really wasn't the case. We had some turnovers and we had some penalties, but it didn't, it didn't dictate the game. Absolutely. Well played football game. Both teams with short rosters inside of 20 players pouring their hearts out here in Bristol, New Hampshire. We are the Granite State Sports Network. That puts a wrap on week one here at Newfound Regional High School where once again the final score is the Franklin Golden Tornadoes 22 and the Newfound Regional High School Bears 20. This is Mike Bellevue along with my partner Brandon O'Connell signing off. Thank you and hope to see you next week.